Wow, thank you for that great introduction. I appreciate it. And it is right on time. And as you know, we like to get started right on time. So uh, as we just heard from the introduction, yes, this is uh, something that I have demoed for about 25 people one-on-one. -on -one. <clears throat> and every time that they get on, they are a little bored because Mike asked them to see a demo. And then I can literally see them like twitching, getting nervous, putting their hands on, trying to interrupt me, but let me finish. Uh, and then when they're done, they're excited about two things. Number one, Mike, when can I get a copy of this? And I'm like, I can get you a review copy in a couple of days. And they're like, no, I don't, I don't mean a review copy. Like, I need this for my launch next week. Um, a couple of people, uh, like Harlan Kilstein, when he saw it, he literally made a post on Facebook and he said, um, you know, I'm a proponent of copywriting with AI, but I haven't seen anything that can do it in a workflow the way that, that marketers can do, uh, that copywriters need. And he says, I've seen the future uh, and it's coming soon. And he was referencing to this. He didn't say our name, but it was 10 minutes uh, after we had spoken. You're gonna be seeing that demo today. I literally am getting blown up by all of my JV partners. They want their review copies. They wanna see this. They wanna be able to show it. They wanna pay for it. They have their lifetime. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna let you know, let me put my little webcam on here. All right, I believe that you're seeing, uh, you're seeing me right now. So the first thing I wanna let you know is that the software is being released the day after Labor Day. Uh, I believe Labor Day, if I look at my calendar over here on this screen, um, is September 4th. That means there's gonna be about 4,000 to 5,000 backers, and that means we're gonna start releasing on Tuesday, September 5th, and the final one will be released on Friday, September 8th. So we're releasing between 1,000 and 1,250 copies uh, today. So let's jump on in. Let's start with the presentation. Uh, let's take a quick look here in the questions, uh, quote, AKA the chat. I'm just gonna pop that out so I could see that a little bit better. Uh, we have Frank Heat, uh, Nicholas McIntosh, Sarah Bright. Sarah was just talking with you on Skype. Glad you made it. Thank you so much. Uh, Amanda van der Gulick, uh, Lynn, Lynn Eby, Amy, Brinda, and if you want your name read later, uh, put in the chat a one next to your city, and then maybe in a few minutes we'll get to that. Uh, uh, put a one if you hear me loud and clear, and put something else if you don't. So let's jump in. <coughs> All right, Groove.ai, world premiere. Uh, here we go. All right, let's close this calendar. Not sure. Okay. All right, so number one, welcome. We're not going to do what we did the last time and play AI, um, you know, audio and stuff like that. This was the first time we did this was back in February when we announced this project. And here we are on the eve of September, September, where backers are getting this in less than three weeks. So the first thing I want to let you know is there will be a free gift for every single person that stays on at the end after the Q&A, okay? And it's a free Chrome extension that is a basically a mini version of Groove.ai, and you're gonna be getting that for free, but you do have to watch the entire presentation. You do have to uh, stay on until we, we tell you how you can get access. Spoiler alert, we're gonna be talking about how if you're an influencer or anyone and you wanna have your own white label partner version of this software, where you'll get your own domain and we create all the marketing materials for you and this software will sell for $299 a month and you'll profit with us. It'll 99 and 299 are the price points and we'll split it 50-50, but you'll have your own software company. That option is also coming later. But when you hear about that, then we're gonna do, do the Q&A. <clears throat> And then I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can get a, a free Chrome extension that does much of what you see here today in Groove.ai. Um, we'll talk about the, the differences. Uh, free, and it'll follow you around at every website you go. And that's uh, in the Chrome store. You can't find it because we, we've shut off the search until after this webinar. We're gonna show you exactly how you can get that free Chrome extension that's gonna do much of what you can see here today uh, as well. Okay, moving on then. <clears throat> All right, what you're gonna to learn today, how Groove.ai is revolutionizing the digital marketing industry and increasing productivity by 10X and conversions by 50% up to 2X. Uh, I really should change that to, to uh, 2X. So we, we've seen at least a 4X increase in 
in, and it's compounded because it's in open rates, in click-through rates, in opt-in rates, in show rates, in conversions. So we're going to show you how you can do that too without breaking the bank. Next, last time we did this, I had a long 20-minute version about what is ChatGPT and what was it, and everybody needed to you know, kind of understand those things. We're not going to do that anymore. ChatGPT came out in November. It's been almost a year. So most of you know, you've been hearing about AI. We're going to have a little bit of uh, talk about it here. But when was it originally launched? Well, it came out, as you can hear, see here, June 11th of 2018. Uh, ChatGPT1 at that time was basically this, folks. You know when you're typing on your iPhone and it, it gives you predictive text? It literally would just predict the next word. And it had no dimensionality. It didn't truly make any sense. It could just predict new words. And they came out with ChatGPT2. And when that came out, um, it, it basically went from a turtle to a chimpanzee, right? And then ChatGPT3 came out in May, of 20, uh, May 28th of 2020. And at this point, we were starting to see some dimensionality. It could start to actually understand prompts. But at this point, you know, we were probably talking with like a, like, like a five-year-old to an eight-year-old. It just, it, you, the future was here, but we thought it was 20 years away. Okay. Then in July, uh, June 11th of 2020, uh, ChatGPT3 uh, was released. And there's an arrow pointing there because at this point, this is when we started saying this can actually be used with a lot of fine tuning. People were looking at companies that were coming out with using the API for OpenAI like Jasper and seeing, um, hey, this, this sort of works. Are you using it for copy? Um, you know, hey, it can write a good headline, but it can't really write good copy. And myself and other people like John Benson were saying that uh, online. We were saying it's going to be 10 years away. Okay, <clears throat> But at that point, Jasper launched. Just remember that. Then, in November, as we said, about 10 months ago, uh, 9 to 10 months ago, uh, November 30th, call it nine months ago, Jasper, uh, I mean, um, OpenAI released ChatGPT 3.5. Uh, and that is the one that we got access to, and that changed the world. Let's just move on to here, talk about when we said that Jasper, um, if you remember, it says right there in 2020. Well, Jasper announced... And you could see the date there, November of 2022, just two years later after being a company, less than two years, about 20 months later, they announced that they raised $125 million on a Series A funding round, bringing the total valuation of their company to $1.5 billion, and et cetera, et cetera, okay? <clears throat> and you can see here that the founding date, January 11th of 2021, and this article was November of 2022. So less than 20 months. But we're going to talk about if Jasper is worth anywhere near 1.5 billion today in just a second. So over here, as we said, after Jasper released, then ChatGPT came out literally right when that art, right when they raised money, ChatGPT came out, okay? And as we know, uh, ChatGPT, let's look at how fast they went from uh, from zero to 100 million users. They were the fastest platform in history to ever do it. The, the telephone took 75 years to go to 100 million users. Mobile phones, 16 years. Shout out to those people that were using the old cellular one bricks that were drilled into the side of your car, if you remember. We used to call them car phones before we called them uh, cellular phones because you couldn't walk around with a bag unless you wanted to look like uh, Michael Douglas or Gordon Gecko in Wall Street. Took Netflix 10 years to get to 100 million users. Obviously, that was paid. Uh, Twitter took six years to get to 100 million users, and that was free. Gmail, which is free, took, and we all use Gmail, right? Wow, gosh, it took five years. Well, that's pretty impressive. It's 100 million users. Um, Facebook, <clears throat> free, took four years. Instagram took 2.5 years. TikTok, nine months. That was like, if you can imagine that they shamed Facebook and Instagram, and they did it in less than a year. And we thought that that's pretty much where it was going to end. And then ChatGPT reached 100 million users in, uh, in 60 days. They reached, uh, I, I believe they, they reached a million users in four days, which also set a record. And there you go. That's how everything looks. So what happened when ChatGPT basically revolutionized uh, you know, uh, the world? Uh, here and, and basically changed. Uh, I'm just moving uh, some notes here for me so I see some upcoming slides. <clears throat> All right. Well, this is 
a quote from a recent blog. And don't kill the messenger here, folks. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not here to beat up on Jasper. I'm, I'm here to uh, explain what happened uh, to this company. And, and, and this isn't my take. This is anything that you can Google about why that company, um, I wouldn't say is crashing, but it's not. It, people are speculating it's not worth $1.5 billion. Um, and I'm going to talk about what other people are saying. Jasper isn't the popular AI writer anymore. Prices are dropping and people are unsubscribing, okay? And that's from this article that uh, is on this blog right here. You could look it up. It was written on August 14th. It was just a couple of days ago from the time of this recording. Uh, the, I believe it's a competitor called Junia, and this is what they're putting here. Jasper AI is not doing well. Who's next, writer or copy.ai? Well, this is what they say here. <coughs> Kicking back, the, uh, the AI writing tools chit-chat up and downs. Uh, I'm going to highlight some of the things here. Um, uh, not everything is as sweet as it looks for Jasper. Take Jasper, for example. At one point, it was a shining star in the vast sky of AI writing tools, but lately, it seemed to have dropped over, uh, tripped over its shoelaces. Jasper's popularity is dropping, its prices are going down, and more customers are choosing to unsubscribe, and employees are getting laid off. So what went wrong? And then it goes on to talk about that. I'm going to tell you what went wrong uh, right after I show you the next slide. So it goes on to say, uh, remember when Jasper was the bee's knees? Well, recent times have shown a bit of a tumble. Once the life of the party, it's feeling now rather like the Cinderella after midnight. Number one, ease of use. In the fast-paced tech world, a slick user interface could be your golden ticket, but Jasper was using basically... A, blo a, a wizard model, a task model, which we've completely revolutionized. What happened was, okay, Jasper saw the, uh, one of the few people, I'll give them all the credit, saw that OpenAI released a developer kit to do what we're all doing right now. But what Writer, Jasper.ai, Copy.ai, and all of, all of them did is they gave you a dashboard that basically said, what do you want to do? Create a headline, put this stuff in. The worst thing that happened, <clears throat> was when you asked it to write a blog. Today I'm going to show you something called Content Copilot. That's what we have. We're working on a trademark for that. When you look at what Jasper did, it was Content Autopilot, or nearly autopilot. It's pretty much as close as Tesla's self-driving car. Very little input from the user. The input that you got, and I'm going to give this example. Let's talk about socialism, okay? As you know, socialism is... Uh, the way that you could write about that could be on co two completely different spectrums, right? If you look at it from a left-leaning um, Karl Marx, Marxist uh, point of view, uh, and you want to talk about the good things about socialism, you could easily understand a blog post being written in favor of socialism. Now, contrast that to a uh, Western uh, capitalist point of view, uh, and not only from a capitalist point of view, but what a, a capitalist would see as the evils of socialism. Well, if you were to write that blog, <clears throat> you would do some research, get educated, read a lot of different things. Remember this, I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to show you this later. And then you would take it from either your point of view, your research, your ideology, you would craft that and then use what you've learned in your brain to repurpose into your article, essay, et cetera, et cetera. Same for copywriting. Let's say you wanted to do that for uh, the 10 things that make a good funnel, right? You would research YouTube videos, other people's writing, some of your information, and then you would codify that and put that into something your own. That's content copilot, what I'm going to show you. Content autopilot, what Jasper was doing was asking you three questions. What's the topic? Socialism. What's the blog title? Give me the keywords. And then it would go boop, 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 give you talking points, an outline, then talking points, and write the entire thing for you. And when you were done, you, they, they called it the first draft, and you had, but you basically were rewriting something that was already written for you. You had no input uh, in it. It was great. It was the coolest thing for, since sliced bread when it came out, <clears throat> but you had no voice uh, in there. Oh, and I forgot one more thing it asked you, the tone. Do you want it educational, friendly, et cetera? But that's about it. It was on full autopilot. And you, you really weren't, you're like, oh my goodness, it just wrote this socialism from a very left-leaning point of view. Let me see how I could tweak it. And then what happens? 
ChatGPT comes out. And ChatGPT, we had, when we did uh, Groove.ai a few months back, we had Sean Vossler on here. He was actually working with Jasper at the time. Um, let, I don't want to get too much into it, but let's put it this way. Sean has a course coming out on you know, how to use ChatGPT until he saw uh, Groove.ai, and now he's going to be doing it for both. Uh, you'll see because it, we've added this incredible layer. But I'm, I don't want to get too much into it because that's Sean's business. But let's put it this way. When an employee of Jasper uh, is finding themselves leaning more towards ChatGPT than actually the company they work for, they had an internal conflict and they had to uh, make a resolution for that. Uh, <clears throat> and then so ChatGPT was 20 bucks. Jasper was expensive, as we said. They're lowering their prices. Why? The truth is they're competing with ChatGPT. And ChatGPT, if any of us have used it, has shown us that we're in control. We're having a conversation with a super intelligence that we could lean to help us write something. But there's a lot of pros and cons to that that we're going to get into. All right, moving on here. Next. After ChatGPT, this is the AI wars. This is good, good for Groove.ai. This is very bad for all of the other companies. Why? With Groove.ai, as you're going to see, when you go in to do any app, you can choose the model that you want. So when you're freaking out that, oh my god, did you just see Google release Palm 2? And new Bard now is trained on 50,000 pra uh, billion parameters. And don't worry, I'll get into a little bit of that for you. And then you, you don't even know what that means. <clears throat> but you're hearing stability.ai. Somebody told me to look at that. Did you see the new video from NVIDIA? They're now competing. The, the people from OpenAI, they split. Half of them went over and started a new company called Anthropic. And Anthropic got investment from Google. And they just created something called Claude. And now they came out with Claude 2 at Claude.ai with 100,000 tokens. What does that even mean? I'll talk about that later. Palm 2 by Google. They, they are now part owners of Anthropic. Microsoft buy, uh, buys 51% or 49, I think 49, or I think 51%, I forget, uh, of OpenAI, which was supposed to be an open source platform. Now Microsoft's involved. So Microsoft's in the game. At the bottom, Elon Musk turns Twitter into X. He's calling it X.AI. He used to own X.com. He still does. What was X.com? It was his competitor to PayPal. And then him and Peter Thiel merged. They met each other back in the early 2000s, and they said, why don't we merge our companies? And Peter Thiel and Elon Musk formed PayPal. Elon Musk fought, fought like hell to call that company X.com. The board of directors said, no, we want to turn this into a verb. You can't say to somebody, X me, but you could say PayPal me. So they changed the name to PayPal, and Elon Musk has been sitting on this domain for over 20 years. And now, now that he owns Twitter, He's made an announcement that he's creating the everything app, like the WeChat of China. Twitter is now X. It's going to have AI. It's going to be a payments. It's going to be social media. It's going to be a YouTube platform. It's going to be everything. And over the next 10 years, it might even be a search engine. Who knows? Underneath that, Facebook releases Llama. And they make it open source, true open source. You can download it. You can put it on your own computer. And you can run your own language model on your own computer. <clears throat> but who really needs to? Like I said, if you look over here, with NVIDIA now getting in the game with something called Nemo, there's one, two, three, seven different language models. And, more, and by the way, there's more popping up left and right. What does that mean to you? Well, if you're a Groove.ai user, let the AI wars compete because whatever is the best platform, you can use it in our dropdown and switch models at any time. So if Llama 2 is suddenly better than ChatGPT's uh, background API, you'll, you'll just switch that into dropdown. The other platforms, they're hard coding their stuff into these, these platforms. And if the AI wars shift, like remember, Hotmail, then Yahoo, then Gmail, and then there was Yahoo as a website, then there was Google, and at one time there was Napster, not Napster, Friendster. Then after Friendster was MySpace, then after MySpace was Facebook, after Facebook was Instagram, then Snapchat. Then, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You, you get the point. TikTok comes out. So those wars don't matter to us or to you because with Groove.ai, you're going to have an advantage of all of those. <clears throat> all right. So when we look at this chart, this little graph here, it says human progress through time, and you are right here. Folks, we are right at the cusp. 
right at the cusp, right at the edge of the mountain, where, where life is going to change in ways that we have never seen. They call it the singularity. Like any new technology, with, um, with splitting the atom for nuclear energy, there's also all the good that can be bad. I promise you we're not going to get into any of that. There's lots of rabbit holes to go down. But what I can tell you is we're going to see a revolution in healthcare, aging, de-aging, cancer, uh, medicine, business, you name it. And Groove for digital marketers is on the forefront. We're about to show you something that is going to literally disrupt and change the way that everyone does AI. Everyone. And our competitors are going to go back to the drawing board. This is the iPhone moment for the BlackBerry. The Jaspers, the copy.ais are likely going to see what we're doing and, and pr probably uh, copy us. And that's OK, because that's, I'm sure I've done that and I've been inspired by many, many people. But we've, we've literally created an iPhone moment for digital marketers when it comes to AI. <clears throat> um, the other companies, in my opinion, are the Blackberries. Um, so the green arrow to the red arrow, what are we really seeing right there? Well, prior to the green arrow, the, the, the analogy or the metaphor that I like to draw is that if you were to take any human being in history, in history, prior to 1850, last 175 years, that's what that green line to the red line represents, the last 175 years. If you were to take anybody prior to 1850 and put them into a town, in another town, <clears throat> drop them off on a train, but also move them back 100 years or move them forward 100 years, that person could live the rest of their life and never know that they traveled a 100 or a 200 year difference in gap, forward or backwards. They wouldn't know. Anybody from 1675 to 1775, nothing changed. 1850, it all changed. The invention of uh, the Industrial Revolution, electricity, the railroad, the automobile, the radio, the car, air travel, m space travel to the moon, uh, televisions in the home, the internet, the mobile phone, and now AI. <coughs> so if you were to take anybody from 18, uh, 1890 and then put them on a train and send them to another city, and when he gets out, it was now 1990, this person wouldn't even know what is going on. This is a person that you know, comes from you know, essentially uh, right after Lincoln, and then suddenly he shows up and there's planes in the skies, there's trains, there's, there's uh, cars, there's televisions, people are talking to other people on their phones. You can imagine. So now that's where we are right now. We're here. And this chart is saying that we're about to spike and see it, what your children and grandchildren are going to see is going to be completely different than anything that we grew up with. Um, and that's because of the singularity that is coming. So let's move forward. <coughs> um, Steve, Steve Jobs said, um, I think one of the things that really separates us from the high primates is that we're tool builders. I read a study that measured the efficiency of locomotion for various species on the planet. The condor used the least energy to move a kilometer. And humans came in a rather unimpressive showing, about a third of the way down the list. It was, it was not a too proud showing for the crown of creation. So that didn't look good. But then somebody at Scientific American had the insight to test the efficiency of locomotion for a man on a bicycle. And a man on a bicycle, a human on a bicycle, blew the condor away completely, off the top of the charts. And that's what a computer is to me. What a computer is to me is it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with, and it's equivalent to a bicycle for our minds. That's what Steve Jobs said in uh, 19, early, early 1990s. <clears throat> um, and now, um, the owner of Stability.ai says that AI is a rocket ship for our minds. Okay? Understand that. The, in that analogy, we're going from a bicycle to a rocket ship overnight. Uh, recently, Bill Gates said, I consider AI to be one of the four big technological events of my lifetime. And he was referring to the, uh, the microchip and the personal computer, then the internet, then mobile computing, 
and then AI is number four. Okay, so in, t in terms of you know, technological events, the microchip and the personal computer, incredible, changed everything. Then the internet changed everything yet again. Then the mobile computing and apps changed everything yet again, and AI is doing that. <coughs> All right, so Groove.ai, or AI itself, with, with a language model, is a calculator for words, okay? Uh, what you're seeing right here, let's, <coughs> let's read that on this next slide here. Uh, before the calculator, um, life before computers, top left I'm reading, this is the main character of the great inspiring movie. Uh, she was one of the brightest minds of her time. Uh, but it wasn't easy. She had to stand tall on a dangerous ladder. With, uh, this ladder had wheels. Uh, yet her focus was unwavering, her fingers meticulously sketching solutions on a 20-foot chalkboard. Each stroke a calculation. A testament to the immense effort needed in that era to put a man on the moon to solve what seemed an insurmountable problem even from the brightest mind, minds in all of history. That's the movie Hidden Figures, where solving a single problem consume, consumes three to six months or more of relentless dedication and possible errors, and we still put a man on the moon. Now, juxtapose that with the image underneath it in modern times that you can have on your iPhone with a modern day scientific calculator, compact, precise, and almost magically efficient. A child can calculate in seconds what took a team of NASA scientists months or even years. Yes, the leap in progress is undeniable, but that was just for math. There's never been anything like that for words, content, or thought. <clears throat> All right, so now we have two new pictures here for the calculator for words. There's a man, you, a woman, looking at their computer, staring at a blank page, finding reasons to procrastinate because they have to write a video sales letter or an email, or their team needs them to come up with that blog post that's already three days late and you just turned in your blog post that was a week late, you just turned that in yesterday. And you have to start over again from scratch. We've all been there with homework, writing a sales letter, writing an email, writing a blog, and then we look at that blank page, and then what do we do? We open up another tab and we go to YouTube. Because unless you're one of those super creative people that cannot think without your hands on the keyboard, it's very, very difficult. And some of those people become great writers and they, uh, you know, the Stephen Kings of the world, they're very prolific. If anyone's like me, I am a brilliant copywriter, but that blank page was difficult. Juxtapose that to the image underneath where anyone can get in front of a computer and you're looking at a little screenshot of content copilot and within seconds transform what's in your mind into multiple different forms of output with multiple different frameworks to the right target audience, et cetera, et cetera. That demo is coming up very soon. As we said, there was never anything like a calculator for words, content, or thought. Certainly not for us digital marketers. Nothing was made for conversion. You know, ChatGPT was out there, but it's the everything tool, <coughs> right? That's like having a computer, but you need an app-specific software to make that computer work. We've always been on the hunt for the perfect blend of art and science. We've had the tools that analyze numbers, track metrics, optimize campaigns, and help you build funnels. But when it came to crafting compelling narratives, creating copy, the conversion stuff, evoking emotions, and generally connecting with our audience, we were often left to rely on intuition and experience. Well, until now. That same transformation, the calculator for numbers, the leap from extensive effort, effort to almost instantaneous results mirrors the new revolutionary Groove.ai, what brings to the table in the realm of digital marketing. Finally, and wait till you see this, I know it's a tease, but we have to, we have to uh, explain the past so that we could appreciate the future. Finally, gone are those days when crafting a full-fledged marketing campaign. What is a marketing campaign? 
the landing page copy, the thank you page copy, the pop-up copy, the webinar copy, the bullets under the webinar, the checkout copy, the FAQ, the pop-up, the card abandon sequence emails, the opt-in email sequences, the webinar registration uh, um, indoctrination series, the after the customer buys stick strategy emails. You would have to hire a copywriter and pay them $25,000 and they would get back to you in 60 days after they made your life miserable because they can't write the copy without coming to you, getting on the phone, and interviewing you for four hours. And then two weeks later, they come back to you with the first draft, and you're like, I, I don't really think you've got the right angle on that. You're, you're, you're focusing too much on, on webinars um, for my webinar software. I really think you need to be talking about the features of the software, not what webinars can do, right? And then <clears throat> you sometimes just have to lay down because the launch is happening in, in 10 days. Folks, this is reality before you can now create a campaign with the click of some buttons. Countless edits, time frame stretching from weeks to months. I'm reading again. We don't want to pay a copywriter $25,000 or more, right? So what choice did we have? <sighs> the dreaded blank page syndrome. Weeks of work, and who knows if it's gonna convert? Heck, 99% of us are not even copywriters. <coughs> uh, by the way, guys, um, <coughs> Uh, let's, uh, I, I hit a space bar and apparently that just broke everything there. So uh, that's a terrible little uh, feature. So <clears throat> let's reload that. And I'll get a sip. And we'll tap through here. Oh, I think I can just skip right to that page. I think we are somewhere around here. All right, so let's see. <coughs> Sorry about that, okay. All right, back in. I'll put a little clap here for me when I edit this later. All right, sorry about that for your ears, guys. All right, those days are over. Introducing Groove.ai. On the left, the dreaded blank page syndrome. Underneath, introducing Groove.ai. It's akin to wielding a powerful calculator for words. Now. With this amazing platform, you can see for yourself, seamlessly gliding through content creation with our intuitive interface. Let's go back to that previous slide. That was some pretty good emotional text, wasn't it? Finally, gone are the days when crafting a full-fledged marketing campaign. Who do you think wrote that? I did with Content Copilot with ChatGPT. I wrote it with AI. These, this presentation, the outline of this presentation was given to me by Groove.ai. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a quick little time for you to say, but Mike, I don't know what a large language model is. Please help. And that was written by somebody named Name, and that was the position in their company. Okay, that's what happens when you use templates, right? So I don't know what a large language model is, an LLM, chat GPT. Okay, so. I'm gonna walk you through something real quick right here, and I might even jump on the whiteboard to help me explain it a little bit better, but let's just first go here. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, all of these different language models, if you look at them, they, many of them have the LM in there, right? So Palm, why did Google call something Palm when there was a company called Palm Pilot? Well, the P stood for something and the LM meant language model. Stability calls their stability LM. Facebook calls, calls them Llama because that's L -L, uh, L L M, right? So they were putting these words and then the, the, the next generation was a type of Llama called an alpaca. So if you're wondering where those things came from, it's just because it, it's a, the acronym for large language model. So large language model uh, and just bear with me here. This looks a little technical. By the time I break this down, uh, you're gonna understand what they are. But the reason why I'm showing you this, trust me, I could care less to teach you how this works or why it works um, or what it is. I'm doing this slide for one reason and one reason only. I wanna show you how ChatGPT works 
and why it's been so frustrating for you sometimes. And when you get this, I'm hoping that you're gonna have an aha moment because I've broken it down into the four quadrants of an AI chatbot, right? I could call it a large language model, I could call it ChatGPT, but at the end of the day, it's the thing that you talk to and say, uh -uh, who is Ben Franklin? And it responds back to you, right? It's the, it's the technology that you're having a conversation with. So let's start with the top left. It says wisdom. What is the, uh, the top left? Well, first of all, a large language model is a genius slowly becoming an all-knowing God. Now, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm using this as a metaphor, okay? Uh, so please don't take any offense when I say that this thing is a God. I'm talking in terms of human knowledge compared to us, okay? So over here, um, how is this thing trained? Well, the, the better a language model is, the more wise or the more wisdom that it has. So I want you to imagine a large language model is a genius becoming an all-knowing God. And the way that it, it learns is, in this metaphor, by traveling to different parts of the world and living longer, right? If you only lived in Arkansas for four years, you're going to have a very limited world knowledge. But if you live for a thousand years and you've traveled to every single part of the world, and at the bottom here, you see it says you have a photographic memory with instant recall across multiple domains. And what is a domain? Physics, the STEMs, mathematics, religion, right? Um, pr programming, language, any single thing that you could break down and then break down and then break down again. Science has physics, uh, uh, astro astronomy, or quantum physics, or <coughs> bi biology, uh, chemistry. All of these different things are what we refer to as domains, okay? So when you hear that a new language model came out, it'll say something like this. Featuring 7 billion parameters trained on 800 billion data tokens. Well, what does that really mean? It means how many 800 billion words, essentially, right? And where do they get this information? Well, they scrape all of Reddit, all of the internet, all of Wikipedia, all of YouTube, and take every transcript for every video that's ever been written on every topic, and they put this <coughs> into one big, huge brain of text. And then they then use, when it says seven billion parameters, well, what you have to be able to do is you have to put everything in domain. Oh, well, this is programming. And in programming, that's PHP, and that's Python, and that's JavaScript. And in languages, we have structure of languages, verbs and nouns, and we have uh, different languages like Portuguese and French and Spanish. And so it has to map all of those different things, and that's what they call basically creating parameters because a rat is closer to a mouse than it is a giraffe. But giraffes, rats, and mice are all animals. So it basically creates this architecture. And what is it replicating, folks? What am I getting to? It creates an actual brain, just like ours. They call them parameters. In our brain, we call them neurotransmitters because they go through neurons. There, they go from electricity from a data center. But the, 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 uh, the seven billion parameters basically means how many neural connections that it has in its brain. We have more than monkeys and chimps. And so when you start hearing this has 30 billion parameters, well, that's like that all-knowing God living for 10 years for now 50 years. And then you, you'll hear it was trained on 80 billion or 100 billion or 200 billion parameters, et cetera, et cetera. The parameters are more important than the number of tokens. After 800 billion tokens, folks, it really doesn't matter anymore. Now we're going to start getting your uncle's blog, you know, all the conspiracy and whatever. I might actually agree with your uncle, but, but you follow what I mean? All of these different things, we're starting to get the junk of the internet. There's only so much good quality information. So that's pretty much there. We're just going to read the rest of that. It's akin to age and wisdom. It's like going from a chimp to a baby to a genius to a god. The more parameters and the more tokens that it's trained on, the, the wiser it is. <clears throat> okay, remember, it has a photographic memory, instant recall across multiple domains. Now, the next thing that we're going to go to <clears throat> is over here, and I'm calling this Lenny. And why am I calling this Lenny? Well, uh, do me a favor. In the chat, put a one if you saw Memento, 
um, and put a zero if you did not see Memento, and put a five if you saw 50 first dates with Drew Barrymore, and put, uh, put three X's if you didn't see any of those movies. All right, and we get um, uh, Peter Moen Ganara, uh, well, let me say it right, Moen Garo, Ga Garoa, Moen Garoa. Hopefully I said that right, Peter. Uh, Peter says, uh, wow, love Mike's explanation. So let's go again. Uh, one, if you've seen Memento. Um, a five, if you've seen Fifty First Dates. Then you could put a one comma five if you've seen both. And if you, if you haven't seen Memento, put a zero. And if you haven't seen either, put triple X's. Okay, so we're getting zero, zeros, one. Rosalind saw Memento. Uh, Shell said XX. Michael puts a one and a five. Michael, awesome. You've seen them both. You're, gonna, you're really going to know where I'm going. Folks, Memento, Christopher Nolan's movie. If you like Interstellar, you like Tenet, you like Dunkirk, you like The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, you like um, his latest movie, Oppenheimer, <clears throat> you like The Prestige, uh, you need to see Memento. It's in my top five greatest movies of all time. I'm going to tell you why we have this here. But you guys are putting zero fives, uh, Xs. So I would say about half of you never saw any of these movies. So let me explain to you what's going on here. <laughs> uh, I love the image on the bottom. Okay, so Lenny and Drew Barrymore, both of them cannot form any new memories. They only have memories up until the day they got hit on the head and had an accident. So they remember their entire life and they know everything, but every day that they wake up, as you can see on the bottom, Drew Barrymore, she's married to this person. <laughs> but she met him after she can't form new memories. Every day she wakes up, her memories reset. So there she is going to bed with Adam Sandler and the next morning she wakes up and screams because there's a stranger in her bed. Okay, so let's call her Drew. And Lenny, <coughs> Lenny is a guy that was a very, very intelligent uh, investigator for an insurance company. And one day his house got robbed by two men. They killed his wife. Let's leave it that way. Um, you gotta watch the movie, okay? But for this, they killed his wife and they hit him on the head trying to kill him. When he woke up, he couldn't form any new memories. But he remembers his wife getting her head bashed in. So now he's on the hunt, using his investigative skills to find the murderer of his wife. Every time he gets a note, a thing, he, he writes it down, and then when he gets home, he tattoos it, and when he takes his clothes off, his entire body is covered with tattoos. Every morning he wakes up, he thinks it's the day after, uh, uh, he, he, the day before he saw his wife, he wakes up, he sees himself in the mirror, and he realizes that he's told himself that this is what happened. He has a book that he could read, and he goes, and he's looking for the murderer. Here's what happens with Lenny. Very different than Drew Barrymore. Lenny is really like ChatGPT. Lenny can only talk to you for about three and a half to four minutes. If you're talking to Lenny, this scene that I put right here, He's talking to a guy at a motel, and he already has two rooms in the motel because the guy wanted to make extra money to see if the guy really can't remember anything, so he just started renting him multiple rooms. And so he comes up to the guy at the counter, and he says, hi, my name's Lenny, and the guy just looks at him just like this. And he goes, uh, I have this condition. I can't form any new memories, and, and then the guy's just looking at him like this, and he goes, I've told you this story before, haven't I? And the guy goes, yeah, man, it's just so weird. You've been here for three weeks. We have this conversation every morning. And so <clears throat> that's the beginning of the movie. And you're realizing Lenny can't form any new memories. But it's so bad that if you're talking to Lenny and you say, excuse me, Lenny, I've got to go to the bathroom. And you go to the bathroom. When you come out, Lenny's going to go, what, who, who are you? What are you doing in my home? Could you imagine the torture of that? Well, guys, let's go back here. Here we are, ChatGPT, I'm going to open up a chat right now and bring that over. <coughs> and let's see, let's bring this like this. This is ChatGPT. Every single time you open up a new chat, guess what you just did? You just walked into a room and you're talking to Lenny. 
Why? Because Lenny has all of the memory, right? ChatGPT has all of its world knowledge. But what just happened is you just hit it over the head and it became Lenny. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have right here. Okay, they talk about GPT-2, then GPT-3, which had 1,000 tokens, then, uh, then, then 4,000 tokens. We're going to talk about that. Then they said, oh, we just came out with ChatGPT 3.5, and it has 16,000 tokens. And then there's ChatGPT 4, which means it has a 32,000 or 32K, 32,000 token window. What in the world does all this mean? Claude just came out <clears throat> with a 100,000 token window, which means that you can paste in the entirety of the great Gatsby into the chat and actually have a conversation with it. But, okay, the, the, when you open up a conversation, you can only have, who is Ben Franklin, okay? What we just did is we just started a conversation with Lenny. Lenny is a genius. He has all of the world's knowledge. He's been trained on all of the information. But the more we start having a conversation, let's read what hap happens here. Models with more tokens mean they can chat with you longer before their dementia kicks in. I missed the one above it. It's like talking to Lenny or Albert Einstein with dementia. That, folks, and by the way, folks, uh, I have family members with dementia, lost family members. My partners have had family members. Uh, this is a, dementia is a very, very sad thing. I'm simply doing this for uh, the ability for you to understand what's happening when you're talking to ChatGPT, okay? It's like talking to Lenny or Albert Einstein with dementia. The more tokens that you hear that a platform has simply means that they can chat with you longer before their dementia kicks in. The more text you give it, the less it can remember and the worse it performs. The longer the chat history, the more we start having a conversation here with the chat, And George Washington, it's going to give me a bio on George Washington. If I start asking it right now, who is the first person I asked you? It's going to say, oh, you asked me about Ben Franklin. If I ask it about the next 10 presidents, even though Franklin wasn't a president, but if I go from Washington to, you know, to, to Adams, to Jefferson, uh, to Jackson, and you know, Quincy Adams, all the way down the line, by the time I get to Lincoln... I'm going to say, who's the first person I asked you about? It's going to hallucinate and make something up. You asked me about Napoleon and, his, and uh, the Napoleonic Wars. And have you ever had this with ChatGPT? You're like, what, what are you talking about? I, we did not have that. Here's the thing. ChatGPT doesn't really know how to say I forgot. So it hallucinates and just makes things up. That's the way that it works. Because it's like dealing with somebody with dementia. Put a one in the chat. If that makes sense to you, or if you've ever worked with ChatGPT and you said, I want all of the output to work like this, and I want it in bullet format, and then it gives it to you, and then the third time you say, now do it for this, and it goes, it just gives you something. Without the original instruction, you're like, hey, remember, I told you that I wanted everything in bullet points. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, it's a large language model, some type of, and it gives it to you. But this time it forgot to initially uh, make every word in the headline all caps. And you're like, remember, I said all capitalized initial caps on the words and all my bullet points in bullets double space. Oh, yes. And then it, it does it and it messes something else up. What's happening is the instructions that you gave it earlier up, it's now having a Lenny problem. It's been four minutes. You went to the bathroom and came back. It doesn't remember this conversation. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's see what you guys are saying here. Tons of ones. Yes, definitely been there before. So when you, when you start adding all of this stuff, and guys, the demo's coming right up. When you start adding all of this stuff to, uh, to ch the ChatGPT or you give it a blog post and say rewrite it, what you've done is you've just given it more information that's taking up its memory. And as you start typing, it's going to forget things. And you're going to say, why are you making things up? You're just making things up. Well, folks, that's it. That's the second part of a language model is when you open up something with ChatGPT, it is locked in, and if you wanted to give it all of your works, it can't do that. It needs something called a knowledge base. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Let's talk about the third thing, okay? Let's going to move right here. <clears throat> um, let me just read these. The more text you give it, the less it can remember and the worse it performs. The longer the chat history, earlier chat goes into a memory hole, dementia, and the, uh, the worse it performs, 
and the more it frustrates you. <laughs> That's the learning problem. Number three is something called the system prompt. Um, the system prompt, AK, um, that's where you can fix a role to its personality. Example, act like William Shakespeare, who's always in a bad mood, and answer every prompt in a riddle poem that rhymes. If you add this to the system prompt, it will act like this forever. So let's actually, I'm just going to grab something here. because I have that text right here. And I'm going to open a new chat and watch this. We're going to say, act like William Shakespeare, who's always in a bad mood, answer every prompt in a riddle poem that rhymes. Who is Ben Franklin? Okay, so now I'm having a conversation with Lenny. If now I say, who is George Washington? Who is Abraham Lincoln? Who is John Adams? Who is John F. Kennedy? By the time I get to Barack Obama, it's going to stop making a rhyme, or it's going to slowly forget what the initial prompt was. So how did we get around that? Well, <clears throat> in OpenAI, they created something that didn't come out into, into ChatGPT, or did it, um, right here called the system prompt. The system prompt allows us to add something to Lenny's personality before he got hit on the head. That means it's fixed. Once I put this in the system prompt, I can just say, who is Ben Franklin? And I'm in the developer uh, section for OpenAI. And you see, it's going gonna, it's gonna to follow these instructions. But now I can do this for the next 300 years. And it will always give me the same prompt, because I've fixed this role to its personality. I've added this to its DNA. When you do it into ChatGPT, you're putting it into the prompt. And the more you have a conversation with it, you're going to say, in about two minutes, after you spoke to it 10 times, hey, you're not acting like William Shakespeare or you're not rhyming. You're supposed to be in a bad mood. <clears throat> All right, so just so you know, ChatGPT for the plus users, you can go to settings and beta, you can go to the beta features, you'll see a little checkbox that says um, uh, allow custom instructions, and I have that right here. This allows you to activate this and put it in anything you want, like act like a direct response marketer and all these different things. The problem is, and I'm going to show you why that's difficult, is sometimes you just want to have a conversation in a new chat and ask it, why is my iPhone not working? And it starts writing sales copy, right? Because you told it to act like a direct response marketer. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is half-baked. Wait till you see how we do it in group. Now, the last thing I want to let you know when we go back to uh, the presentation before we see our demo is, remember, the first thing is the wisdom. How well was it trained? Number two, what is the token size? It's going, the more tokens they say a model has, the longer you can talk to Lenny before he forgets. Does it have a system prompt so that you can fix a personality to it to say, act like a direct response marketer in the style of Dan Kennedy. Make your conversation witty. Write to a target market of digital marketers, uh, the avatar being women, uh, Generation X that are technophobes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those three things are here. Now, the knowledge base. <coughs> well, this is where you upload the consciousness of any data set to the language model. So let me show you something here, folks. We're going to go, and I'm going to go to my YouTube channel. <coughs> and I'm going to go to groove.cmofficial. We're going to go to my live streams in the past. <coughs> and we're going to find this one here of me right here. See, it's 2 hours and 28 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to take this video. Okay, so here's a, here's a two hour and 40 minute uh, video. And I'm going to go to something called YouTube transcript. And I'm going to paste that YouTube URL and I'm going to get the transcript of that two hour and 40 minute webinar. I'm going to copy the transcript, right? And I'm going to go into ChatGPT. And I'm going to start a new chat. And here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to summarize this webinar. <coughs> go. Boom. And up. Uh, the message is way too, was too long. Please reload the conversation and submit something shorter. So then what I do is I have to break it up into 37 different paste, 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 paste. 
Put a one in, put a, put a 50 in the chat if you've ever done that, gotten that error because a document that you wanted it to rewrite or reformat or write into an email, please put a 50 in the chat if you've ever gotten this error that you've put too much information and you've had to paste it in a few things at a time. <coughs> well, here we go. Kelty Harris, Farish Shaw, Todd Sism, Sismkowski, Nestor, Paven, and Natalia. Uh, I mean, you guys are just pulling Flo, Charles, uh, John Corp. You guys are all for 50 with exclamation points. Uh, and so uh, let me put it to you this way, uh, Rob and Charles. This is something you didn't realize. The more you paste, it has more recent memory of your recent paste. And the one that you did seven times ago, it's already forgotten. It's, it has the Lenny problem. So good luck trying to do anything like this with anything long. So what they've come out with is they've come out with something called a knowledge base where you could create something as large as you want for it and you, can, you could basically create a knowledge base about every single article in your help desk or, or every book that you've ever written. If you're Dr. Joe Vitale and you want to upload your own books and create a knowledge base, you can do that. But you can't do that here. So the last question, does ChatGPT have a knowledge base? Yes, it does. They're right here. Let's create a new chat. They're right here. <coughs> They're called plugins if you're a Plus user. And then you could go in to the plugin store, but it's essentially a knowledge base store. And what people have done is they've created all of these paid solutions like ask a PDF and you got to create an account and then it lets you upload a 300 page PDF because it creates a knowledge base for you that you can have a conversation with. They want you to pay for all these different things. Look at this. If we click on all, we have 105 pages times eight. 105 times eight. There are nearly 1,000, nearly 1,000 knowledge bases that are here. But how do you upload your knowledge base if you just want to create a knowledge base? Well, you have to become a developer, and you've got to put it into the store, and you've got to make it public for everybody to see. What is somebody to do? Well, introducing Groove.ai, where we have solved the, the knowledge base problem, the system prompt problem, et cetera, et cetera. So let me show you essentially what a knowledge base is real quick. I'm going to go into something. This is another company that we're going to be doing the same thing later this year. Uh, with our knowledge base, you're going to be able to have a conversation with a knowledge base that they call it a chatbot. As you can see, every one of my websites that I go to, groove.cm, <coughs> at the bottom corner right here of every one of these websites, I have a little chat widget, okay? Uh, I have it at groove.ai. I have it at the Collective Mastermind, Groove Agency, and Fit Class. And so how does it work? Well, you have to give the knowledge base data. So you simply go like this. You go to the website tab, and we have the same thing in Groove.ai. You, you, it says crawl. You put in your website URL, or you submit your sitemap if you have that, and it will literally crawl every single page and say trained, trained, trained. Look at that. 36,000 words here, tokens, but they're words essentially, right? And then I put in my, my help desk, and then I put in <coughs> GroovePay, and my website Groove Digital. And every single website that we have at our website, Groove.ai, found everything. And so it crawled. It found all of these sites. And when it's done, it said that it found 1.8 million characters that it's trained on. I could also put a Q&A because, you know, Groove's had many pricing over the years. I wanted to know the, the current pricing, right? And then so when I'm done, oh, by the way, just like ours, I'll show you in our interface, you could upload a PDF, a doc, or a text file. And hours, you can even upload an audio file. And if you upload an audio file, it'll transcribe it. So you can create a knowledge base on your information, your podcast, your YouTube videos, anyone else's YouTube videos, etc. All right, next. You have to tell it how to act. So right here, you see it says, act like a friendly sales rep and a friendly customer support rep for Groove. Refuse to answer anything unrelated to the information. And then you did some more information about, you know, if it asks about my competitors. I, I, it's like a chat prompt, right? And then when that's said and done, I go here. I click embed. I get this little code, and I put it on my website, and I get this. Now, remember what I said. Refuse to answer anything unrelated to the information. This is important because I want to show you this later. We want to limit its world knowledge. Because if I want to write an article about socialism, but I want to write it from a Marxist uh, socialist point of view, I want to say refuse to 
uh, you know, uh, show socialism a bad blah, blah, blah. Now, if I want to do it from a capitalistic point of view, I can say, do not talk about any of the goods of socialism, right? But that, that's my point here that I'm trying to say. So just like here, I'm going to say, how do you bake a cake, right? And it says, hmm, I'm not sure. But I can definitely help you with any questions about Groove and its features. Can I assist you with that? All right, well, try me. How do I animate a button on the Groove Pages canvas? Well, <clears throat> it should know that because that was trained on. And there it goes. It's going to give us step-by-step -step information. I can say, uh, is this better than ClickFunnels? Absolutely. Groove offers a powerful, comprehensive platform. It's all in one, etc. What is your pricing? Thank you for your interest in Groove. We have several different plans, etc., etc. Now, I can now go into app.groove.cm. <coughs> And you'll notice, when you click on this little thing over here, we used to send you to this old Zendesk-style Help Scout widget where there's articles and everything. Now our users can come right in here, just like this, and say, how do I connect my domain with Namecheap? And I can give it anyone, GoDaddy, anybody. And now my users are getting instant information on how to do it with Groove. It's cut our help desk tickets down by 28%, increased our front end conversions uh, by nearly a couple of percentage points. All right? So our customers are also happier. We're getting a higher customer satisfaction. So that, folks, the only reason why I was showing you that was so that you understand that you can create a knowledge base with Groove.ai. So let's get back to the slides. We're getting very close to the demo. But I wanted you to understand these different things about uh, a knowledge base and a system prompt so that you can see why, when you're talking with Lenny, you can't feed it information. You have to give a knowledge base, okay? Uh, so moving on here, <clears throat> next slide. We're going to skip the whiteboard for right now. Let me talk to you about the problems with ChatGPT that you're all aware of. Number one, when you pull up ChatGPT, you've all noticed there's no way to search any of your stuff. Uh, put a one in the chat if you've ever done this. Scroll, scroll. Scroll, did I miss it? Let me go back up, down, scroll. Where in the world was that conversation I had nine months ago, right? Put a one in the chat if you've ever had that problem. No, um, so ChatGPT lacks structured organizational system, making it a challenge to categorize and retrieve specific information or past interactions and conversations efficiently. Number two, it has no sharing features. There's no collaboration, unlike Groove.ai, which is something like Google Docs, you can't seamlessly share your work with collaborators. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to give them access to all of your work, to allow access, you're forced to share your sensitive login information, like your email and your password. It also has a disconnected workflow, meaning that when you're working on a chat over here, you also have a Google Doc open over here, and then you've got another Google Doc open over here, and what happens with those Google Docs, guys? You've seen it, right? You go and you take your, uh, you go to take your, um, your copy like this, and you paste it, and you get this. Or you say, give it to me in markdown with h1 and h2 and bold, and make it longer. Okay, so now when you get output with bold, oops, this is, uh, stop generating. I forgot to say what you see is what you get markdown. <coughs> One message at a time. Bear with me a second. Sometimes that happens. I just got to reload it. Okay, so let's do it like that. And so now we're going to get markdown. Okay, so let me just copy this right here. I'm gonna show you the problem that you get. So if I copy this and I try to paste that into a Google Doc, you get this. 
right? You've all had that problem. Or if you click paste without formatting, well, you're not getting the formatting. So they think they solved it for us, right? So I'm just going to hit stop generating. And I'm going to click this copy to clipboard thing. And I'm going to now paste. And it, gives, it, it doesn't translate the markdown. Google Docs doesn't do that. I'm going to just show you just real quick. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of, of ours. This is the first sneak peek you're going to see, guys. Uh, bear with me just a second. We're going to come to this user interface in just a minute. But what I want to show you is that I can now just simply paste uh, here, and ours, ours handles the markdown. Okay, but I'm going to show you more of that in just a minute. Okay, um, the other thing is, um, yeah, like I said, like if even if you try to copy everything, it doesn't it doesn't work. And so what I mean by having a disconnected workflow is you've got your chat GPT here, where you're saving everything in a Google Doc. And now if you want to share this Google Doc with your team, they don't get to see the chat that that created it. There's no workflow with it. So let's bring this back here. Let's move on so we can get to the demo. I think I've opened my, uh, my notes. I think I opened up the wrong one. So let's see. Let's do this, and here we are. OK. <laughs> Lacking integrated document creation means users must juggle between apps. Shifting from Google Docs to organize their work, this not only disrupts the flow, but also detaches projects from their context, making it cumbersome to resume and organize ongoing tasks efficiently. Copy, paste limitations, which I just showed you. There's no knowledge base, so you can't load up tons of diff and different information. And folks, here is the biggest one. Prompt engineering required without a settings dropdown for prompts, like I'm going to show you in Groove.ai. Users need to be prompt engineering specialists. One of the biggest things that's exploding right now, 16 different hacks that you have. You got to be, to become a prompt engineering specialist is like becoming a copywriter. You have to know to say things like, act like a world a class direct response copywriter, writing in the style of John Caples to a target audience of this, the goal of this, and uh, your output should be blah, 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 with a tone like this, and a style like this, and uh, you know, it's, uh, all of these different things. All of these different things. Please remember to use a problem, agitate, solve framework, all these different things. And if you don't know that, folks, you're going to get very boring, banal copy. And the worst part about it is you're not going to know that your copy sucks. You're not going to know that Google's going to hate your blog. It looks like a bunch of text, and you say this is good, and you send it out, and you're going to be, hey, we're using ChatGPT, but our open rates actually went down. Yeah, because you, prompt engineering is required. Okay? So, Content Copilot, which is the app inside of Groove.ai, our first app that we're releasing, that you get access to on September 5th, fixes all of this and more. Okay? When you look at the front of our website, at Groove.ai, all of that copy was written using the AI power behind Groove.ai. It wrote our registration page copy. It wrote our headlines. It wrote all of our bullets. It created websites for us like fitclass.com. Every single piece of communication that we have with you was created with Groove.ai and the technology of, of artificial intelligence. Every single email you're getting, every swipe email, uh, the information and the structure of these slides, everything was done using, using that. So moving on, <coughs> I love this little meme. You show them Groove.ai and everybody loses their minds. I'm hoping you feel the same way as the Joker because that's exactly what he said to me when I had him on a private demo yesterday. Uh, shout out to Heath Ledger, the late uh, Heath Ledger. All right, are you ready? Let's go. We are one hour and 10 minutes in. Do me a favor. Put a big number in the chat. The bigger the number, the more excited you are to see Groove.ai, uh, and because we're going to be jumping in right now. The, the, the next half hour is going to be a full demonstration. I'll be looking over to my right to see if there's any questions, or I might just wait because my team is making uh, a Q&A document. So if you have questions, my team's going to answer it. If they can't answer it, they're going to be putting it into a Google Doc, and I'm going to be doing it here. All right. Uh, I love this number here from Jern Salim uh, and Todd uh, Zimkowski. Uh, just a bunch of nuns. You guys are excited, right? Enough talk. Uh, do me a favor, guys. 
put one more thing in the chat. If, because it took an hour and 10 minutes to get here. Put another uh, comment in the chat for me. If you feel you understand a little bit more about the chat, because I, I spoke to you about the Lenny problem, and uh, let me know if that first hour was helpful for you to understand uh, the deficiencies of, of AI and chat and why you're looking forward to this, all right? So let's move this presentation out of the way. So I'm gonna move that out of my way. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to move these, this out of the way. This is my documents and everything, and we're going to slide in. <coughs> and this is something I was working on yesterday, so let me get out of there. All right, and what I'm gonna do, folks, is I'm going to do an empty cache and hard reload. Why? Because my developers were working on pushing a final version of this for me just before the, the webinar here. So let's see, if I right click on this, I get an empty cache and hard reload. That should give me the latest version of the application. <coughs> okay, all right, all right. Let me see, I also have uh, a document here for me, bear with me, that has a list of stuff that I wanna go over. So I'm gonna go uh, through, this is basically my document of what I'm gonna be showing you today because I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna miss anything here. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna put this on my right and let's go right through. So the first thing that it tells me to show you is that we have a settings panel, right? So we'll get to the boring stuff out of the way real quick. What does the settings panel allow you to do? Well, here's a drop down of all of the different services I was telling you about. You choose your service. Here we're using OpenAI. And when you choose that, you can choose GPT-4 or GPT-3.5. Folks, just so you know, I'm gonna be using ChatGPT 3.5 instead of 4.0. Why? Well, because ChatGPT has more wisdom. 4.0 has more wisdom than 3.5. But with more wisdom means it has, uh, whenever you use ChatGPT 4 over 3.5, it has a bigger brain to search and its output is much slower. It goes pop, 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 pop. So if I ask it to write a blog post during this demo, it's gonna write it very slow because ChatGPT 4 is slower than 3.5. So we're gonna use 3.5 for this. We also um, have something called presets. I'm gonna get to that in just a minute. That, you're gonna absolutely love. There's nothing else in the market like this. And this is what's gonna make us uh, completely different. Also, uh, to let you know, inside of here, you have different languages. By the time you get this, right now it has German, Portuguese, and Spanish. In September, we will have languages for, you know, it'll, there'll be at least 15 different languages uh, in there. What does that mean? Well, if we go to German, it means it's not the output. It changes the user interface to German. Okay, and then uh, shoot. I hope I can figure out <coughs> how to, uh, uh, let's see. Um, I guess that's settings. And voice, <laughs> so I'm not gonna mess around with this anymore. Uh, let me just see here. I might need, oh, here it is, right? And let's just go back to English and you can see what just happened. So yes, you're gonna be able to use this, not for output, yes, output, but also in, in multiple different languages, Spanish, Portuguese, German, French, um, you know, many of the different Asian languages, uh, Russian, you name it, okay? We're gonna end, so there'll be a little flag and you change it, check this out. You'll also be able to change to dark mode, if you like. I'm gonna demo this in light mode, but you could change to dark mode, and you could also change the, uh, the colors uh, as well of the user interface. So. Uh, we'll be talking about a white label later, but like uh, for instance, if you want to change the entire user interface, you notice the logo changes, and you'll be able to upload your own logo if you take our white label option. Let's just stay with the purple for now. Um, so that is the settings. Now we're going to go back to the dashboard. The dashboard right now, again, folks, this is three weeks be uh, three weeks before you will actually get access to the software. So right now it's function over form, okay? But uh, <coughs> all of this is going to be where you're gonna find your different projects, documents, and different things like that, okay? Um, next, we're gonna talk about a knowledge base. You remember you saw me make that knowledge base for my chat widget? Well, you can do the same exact thing here with Groove. You'll create a knowledge base, all right? And we're gonna call this one, I'm just gonna call this 
um, funnels, right? This is all the information that I could find on what makes a good funnel, from headlines to copy to the different types of funnels, when to use different funnels, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So we've got to build this knowledge base now. How do we do that? Well, by the time you get yours, hopefully, it'll have all of the different tabs that you're going to see here. You'll be able to upload, uh, just paste a YouTube URL or as many YouTube URLs as you want. You'll be able to put your, your website in and it'll crawl your, your website for a sitemap. Put in a single page, drop an RSS feed, a JSON if you're technical, paste in text, upload a text file, a PDF, an audio file, put in uh, a Q&A and we're gonna have something called a brand intake form that's gonna be in our system. Basically, we're gonna ask you 30 questions about your business and we're gonna create the knowledge base for you based on your answers. And once we have that, you will be able to write all the copy for your website with never having the Lenny problem because it's all that information is gonna be stored in a knowledge base. When you say, write me an email, write this, write me customer support for my, everything will all be there, <clears throat> all right, with the brand intake form. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the slider that goes from world knowledge to knowledge base in just a minute. Let's go back to here. Okay, next you can paste in text and give it the name of that text or even better, upload a file. As we said, you'll be able to upload an audio file and it'll transcribe it, a Word document, a PDF, a text file, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> now, please note that for each text file, the maximum is five megabytes. For audio files, it'll be larger. What is five megabytes? What does that even mean? Well, we don't like to talk in terms of gigabytes and megabytes, just like Steve Jobs didn't like to talk in terms of pixels or, or uh, memory or hard drive space. Steve Jobs liked to say things like, a thousand songs in your pocket. Oh, that makes sense. What do I care how many megabytes it is? Well, same thing here. The Bible is 4.2 megabytes. War and Peace, the raw text of War and Peace, is about 4.0 megabytes. So you could upload the raw text of the Bible any time that you want, any time that you want, and then add another one. You could put 400 Bibles, 300 War and Pieces, 70 YouTube videos. It doesn't matter. You'll be able to create your own knowledge base of all of the information, and you'll be able to, as a lifetime member, create multiple unlimited number of knowledge bases. When we go live starting September 1st, if you don't back this program, spoiler alert, it's $897 or... Um, just two payments of $4.97 to get your lifetime. If you don't back it, you can buy it later at $99 a month with a lot of limitations. You'll only get three knowledge bases and 10 presets. I haven't gotten to the presets yet. And the $2.99 a month will give you 25 knowledge bases and 25 presets. And $4.99 gives you unlimited. The $99 one won't allow you to have any teams or collaborate. So if you want to collaborate, you have to go to the $299 version or you can just knock it out of the way and just become a lifetime backer and pay $8.97 or two payments of $4.97 and you don't have to worry about making uh, payments of $299 a month from now until eternity, okay? <laughs> so you'll have unlimited knowledge bases as a backer. So what we're gonna do, just for an example, we're gonna go uh, back to YouTube transcript. I'm gonna go to YouTube again. I'm gonna go to groove.cm official. I'm going to load up that, that webinar. <coughs> and I'm gonna paste that into YouTube transcript. We don't need the timestamp. And we're gonna click go. And our API is automatically gonna do this. You're just gonna put in a YouTube URL. But I'm doing it the old fashioned way for right now just to show you so you get an understanding of what's actually happening. I'm gonna create a new document, I'm gonna paste it, and I'm gonna call this, just for this example, uh, Funnels Webinar, right? So now that's done, and now I'm gonna add that to my, let's see where I added that. There it is, the Funnels Webinar text. Now I could also drag it in or just select it, you're familiar with that, and there we go. We've just added a file to our knowledge base, it's indexing, I could add as many as I want. When I'm done with all of these, I would click a button that says index knowledge base and I could have 30 different webinars. 
that I could put in. Now I've created a knowledge base. Okay, so folks, that is how you can create a knowledge base. And now the knowledge base is based on what you favor. So when we go to write a blog post, it's going to be on this, not the world knowledge of the language model. It's going to be based on maybe I did a podcast or maybe I just got in front of a microphone and I said, uh, here are the top 10 things I need you, I think you should do when creating a funnel. Uh, the first one is a headline. The importance of a headline, like right, I just talk into a microphone for a minute. I drag it in here, create a knowledge base, and now say, write a blog post about this. Now write an email to promote the blog post, right? You follow? This allows you to separate yourself from the world knowledge of the language model, which may be biased. That's what I use the socialism example for. You may have an opinion on a completely different version, and you don't want it to say, some people feel that socialism, while others. No, you want a very specific set of information that it's going to repurpose for you. I hope that's making sense. If that makes sense, put a one in the chat, and now let's move on, <clears throat> and let's now talk about the hero of this project. We're going to create a new project. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to call this project Funnel Marketing. All right, I'm just making up a name, folks. It doesn't matter. I'm just giving an example. And this is something that you can right-click, and you'll be able to share with your team. So let's talk about the share settings. That's very important. We have five different ways that you can share. Sh uh, number one is something we called ad call admin. Admin means that you could give, it, uh, give this project access to anybody on your team or anyone that you give an email address to. And no, they don't have to have a Groove.ai account. We'll talk about that in, you know, at the end. Anybody could come in and, and work on the project based on the, the, uh, the, um, the permissions that you give. Sort of like working on a, if you got invited to a Slack or a Trello account, right? There's going to be a basic free account that you could be invited to, but you can't create your own stuff. Now, if you give them admin, they can go into the, the, the project and they can delete things, add things, create content, remove content, etc. If you give them write permissions, so let's go in here. <coughs> Actually, let me just go into the previous one because it had more content in there. If you give the user write permissions, okay, what they can do is they can come in and they can add some more information here and they can they can uh, change some of the information, add new information, but they can't delete any document here. They will not be able to delete because they have write permission but not admin. And if you give them read permission, well, then they can only collect the assets and go. They can't add any new prompts, and they can't even delete anything in here. They're read only. Very similar to a Google Doc, right? Read or what we call write or edit, right? Edit uh, is what we should call it. In fact, uh, I'm just going to change this. I have a, my own document here. I'm just going to change that from write to edit. That's actually what we're calling it. Okay? And then the final one uh, has two parts, and that's what we call the client share settings. And the client share settings means that you don't want them to see any of the chats that you use to create their magic. And you don't want them to see all of the settings that you used. So it'll get rid of the settings, and it'll get rid of that and now you will share this like a Google Doc to your users if you're if you're an agency or on your team and it's gonna say swipe email number one for affiliate swipe email number two swipe email number three registration page copy pop-up copy thank you page copy follow-up series copy etc etc and you'll have every single tab will be right here and they could come in with this format and go directly into a Google Doc or an email and not get that problem that you had with ChatGPT. It keeps the format. And if you paste that into your email, you also get that where ChatGPT breaks. Okay? So that is the share setting. So we're going to go back, start go back into our new project called Funnel Marketing. <coughs> now the first thing that I want you to notice is there are three panes going on from left to right, okay? The first one is your settings. We're going to get to that in just a minute. The next one over here is your chat. So as you notice with ChatGPT, all of your, and I'm going to use this in quotes, new conversations, ready? Watch. Boom. We just created Lenny, right? Every single time we start, we have no knowledge base. We, it's not tied into act like a direct response mark. We've got to start all over. Act with my typos, like a direct, blah, blah, blah. And you got to start all over again. You're going to have that Lenny problem. And where's the search here? You can't even search. 
right? So with ours, as I said, you're going to be able to search everything within here or even globally in your system with a, with a global search outside. I'll just show you that, right? There's a global search. So you'll be able to find all your work or your work within this project, okay? And instead of your chats being here like this, well, they just work like tabs, like a Google document. You want to add a new chat? You simply do that. Just give it a name, right? And by the way, you don't even have to name it because it automatically gets named by our system. Or you could change it if you want. And look over here, guys. You've got your <coughs> document editor right here. This has the ability for you to add pictures. Uh, we're going to have AI images that are going to be coming, not on the release, but very shortly after. You can make H1 or H2 tags. Right, so it's perfect. It's got your SEO built in, including the output that you're going to be getting here as well. Okay, you've got regular paragraph, you've got strike through, bold, italics. You can hyperlink words and then copy and paste it and put it right into your email. So this we're going to call final. Right, and I'm just going to give, give some examples so you kind of understand what's going on. We're going to call this uh, affiliate swipe one. Right, we'll call this. Affiliate swipe two. <coughs> well, watch this. I'm just going to duplicate this document. Boom, right? And we're going to rename this affiliate swipe two. All right, and let me just make one called bullets. Okay. Uh, again, I'm just giving you some example of different <coughs> different ways that you could. Uh, let, let's just create one. We're just going to call this the scratch pad. Artie, if you're listening, I don't know if it does this. Yeah, Artie, if you're listening, let's have the ability to drag these things in place because you might want to start organizing the documents later, right? Uh, because I might have realized, oops, I want to put an affiliate swipe three, but it's all the way over here now and I want to drag it into this place. So uh, my developers are watching this as well. All right, so you kind of get the way this works. You kind of get the way this works. I'm going to turn these presets on. This is very important over here. I'll explain that in a minute. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to... Uh, select our AI service, whoops, make sure that we have our AI service uh, connected. <coughs> uh, we do, we have, uh, we're using OpenAI. I'm gonna, I wanna use my presets. Let's create a preset, okay? So to create a preset, I click here, create new, and let's go and create a preset. Now, who do we wanna act like? A direct response copywriter, an SEO blogger, um, you know, Etc. And when you look at them, for SEO bloggers, you get uh, these different people here. So let me show you all of the different ones that you have. That would be <coughs> here. You're going to be able, and it's all in those drop downs right now, but it's a little easier to see here. If you say direct response copywriter, all of these people will be in the drop down. If you say SEO expert, then you'll have Neil Patel. Uh, you know, all these different uh, SEO experts. The blogger, Neil Patel, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, Seth Godin, Ariana Huffington, Perez Hilton. Press release writer, nonfiction author, article writer. You can write like an article writer or write like a news journalist, a technical writer, a content marketer, a social media manager, storyteller, fiction author, right? Stephen King, J.K. Rowling. You want to write in the style of, of uh, Dr. Seuss? Great. <coughs> Screenwriter. I want to write like Aaron Sorkin or Quentin Tarantino or a biographer, legal ease, a lawyer, medical, health expert. You have talk show host, academic writer, scientific writer, a YouTuber. You want to write like Mr. Beast, a podcaster, a playwright, et cetera, et cetera, going down. Okay, so this again, we're making a preset. Let's just uh, choose, let's write like uh, <coughs> Dan Kennedy, okay? Who's your target audience? Well, there's a difference between target audience and an avatar, all right? Your target audience is your target market. It's the broad sense. I market to these people. Digital, digital marketers. I'm sorry, I can't talk and type at the same time. Digital marketers is my target audience. Who's the avatar? <clears throat> all right, in this example, the avatar is, what is the subset of these digital marketers? 
Are they young? Do they want to drive Ferraris? Are they, you know, are they technophobes, technophobes? You know, exactly, right? So what we're going to do, right? Let's say target market was golfers. Avatar might be begin a golfer with a slice problem, right? So Avatar is, I'm going to put gen, Generation X, men and women, um, entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs, well, no typo help there, entrepreneurs, um, wow, one letter off and no help with the right click, entrepreneurs, uh, technophobes, um, and I think that's good. Now, I want to write to these folks in a 12th grade reading level, here are the rules, okay, the rules are um, always um, be polite, <coughs> I'm just giving an example, right? Let me just give one here. Um, never mention ClickFunnels or Jasper.ai, right? I'm giving it rules that if I want to write an article on the top 10 things that makes a good funnel, I don't need the third one in the article saying, you might want to use software like lead pages and click funnels, right? So I'm giving it some rules. Custom additions, this is so that you guys never come up to me and say, hey, it'll be really cool if you could add this one more uh, additional thing. Now there's, um, um, this is pretty much everything that you need here. So we're gonna save this and now you see, I'm gonna uh, give this a name and I'm going to actually just save it with that avatar right there. Generation X Entrepreneur Technophobes. And so now that I'm back into my, uh, my, my project here, I'm going to select a preset and we're gonna write to Generation X Entrepreneur Technophobes as a direct response marketer, and look, forget it. If we just want to see what that is, I click the little I right here. As a direct response uh, copywriter in the persona of Dan Kennedy at a 12th grade reading level to digital marketers uh, with you know, whatever rules that we had given it. <clears throat> All right, so now we see that. Now, folks, here, this is the beautiful part. What output do I want? Do I want the regular chat GPT that you always get? Or do you want it to be a blog post? And notice, as soon as I went to a blog post, a few things happened. We get a framework of the most popular top 10 different types of ways to write a blog post. And I might say I want to include the blog title, the keywords, and the preview snippet. But also, I can change it from medium to long. But look what else we have. I can write an email, and look, it's changed. I have subject line. We're adding include a PS as well. <coughs> you could do an outline, a headline, a subject line, right? If you need a subject line, you'll just paste in the email. Or, look at this, you can check for grammar, translate to any language, plagiarism, rewrite or respin the article. Maybe you want bullets, you want e-commerce uh, uh, sales copy, a short sales letter, a webinar sales outline, a long form sales letter, landing page copy, a video script, VSL video sales letter. A testimonial, product description, press release, article, social media post, speech, interview, story, FAQ, pay-per-click ad copy, Facebook ad copy, Facebook image ad copy, poll questions, survey questions, etc. Let's start with a blog post. <coughs> Let's keep it short because this is a demo. Next, we're going to go with the framework. Let's go with a listicle. That means introduction, list item, explanation, conclusion. Um, let's do a how-to post. Let's do a how-to post. All right, now, I want the blog title, I want the keywords, I want the preview snippet. Now, the tone. Uh, I can open up a little bit more. Uh, I want this engaging, uh, conversational, casual, and humorous. Now, if I don't like that, I can just type in my own stuff right here, right? I can just simply type it the way I want. But those are, uh, those are good enough for me. Artie, it's got to remember those presets when you go from custom to back. Uh, well, it did here, but <coughs> the other two, for some reason, where I said uh, humorous and casual didn't save. Now, let's do the style, all right? Um, the style, I want it to be, uh, let's say, conversational and instructive. And the goal I want to be, for this, I'm writing a blog, so I want to do this for lead generation, uh, boost engagement, improve brand reception, and that's enough for me there. I'll close this up here. Now, the output, this is what you just saw before, normal 
Or I want that what you see is what you get marked down. I want it to do all of the bold, all of the italics, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that wasn't working yesterday. It was just in the user interface. I don't think it made it today. Um, we can try it. Now, markdown without WYSIWYG is this, <coughs> like this. If you actually want the actual like markdown code, you might, right? And we also allow you to have um, the output in code block. What is code block? Just to give you an example, write me a web page in HTML in code block. And you're getting this. That's code block, right? Just so you know. Like if you wanted countdown timer script, you know, in JavaScript, et cetera. Okay? So that means that you don't even have to know those things exist. That, see, this is all the prompt engineering here is here for you folks. All of this will just go here. I'm just going to see if we get the markdown and WYSIWYG. I don't think we will. I think it's just going to be normal. And then over here, this focus is actually supposed to be this. Again, uh, remember, folks, you're not going to see this for three weeks. It's going to actually be like, uh, like this right here. Default, direct response, SEO or creative. Direct response means it's not focused on keyword density. It's focused on conversion. Default means it's default, default chat GPT. SEO means it has an understanding of keyword density rather than conversion. And creative is really good for storytelling, creating a book, a poem. And so this doesn't do anything to the prompt engineering. If you remember when I showed you as a developer, I have not only a system prompt and the prompt, et cetera, we also have these things called temperature and top P and frequency penalty and presence penalty. I'm not gonna get into it because it doesn't make sense. How much to penalize new tokens based on whether they appear in the tech so far, increasing the model's likelihood to talk about new topics? What? All I can tell you is that these settings need to be different for copyright and creativity, default, or direct response. We built that in automatically for you when you are going to choose these different things down here, okay? <coughs> Hours, instead of saying more creative, more balanced, more precise, we're changing that to default direct response SEO or creative. And as you can see here, I even have notes for my team where the temperature settings and the top P needs to be depending on what they answered. All right, this is just some geeky information, but I want to let you know that's why you're going to get better results with us. Better results in your output means better click-through rates, better open rates, better opt-in rates, longer engagement, higher sales, better upsells, better cross-sells, and happier customers and customer support. You cannot put the amount of, uh, I cannot stress the amount of that compounding effect, all right? So what I want you to see right here, guys, is that I don't, I don't have to put anything in other than the protein. I'm going to give you an, a, a metaphor here. This is your TV dinner. This is your taco mix. This is your, your seasoning kit. Right here in this example, I wouldn't write it, you just write chicken or beef or lamb or goat or tofu or eggplant. You simply put, put in your protein. In this example, this is just a, a metaphor, over here, this is the difference between Kung Pao chicken and chicken franchez. All of the magic happens here. What makes a good chef? Knowing how to make a good recipe, which is your ingredients and the, and the, the preparation. Well, what makes a good output in chat? Well, being a good prompt engineer. You can equate being a prompt engineer to being a chef. Being a good chef, you got to become like Gordon Ramsay. To be a good prompt engineer, you got to study prompt engineering, not with Groove.ai. Groove.ai puts the chef right here. You simply say, do you want Kung Pao chicken? Or do you want chicken franchise in this example? Now here, what I mean by protein, I'm not going to write chicken, right? I'm simply, I don't have to say write a blog post in the style. I simply just say um, top, what the protein, top 10 things that make a good funnel. <coughs> now, I'm going to get 
right now a blog post. Um, well, it's going to be written like a copywriter. I should really switch this to SEO, but you, you get the point, right? Um, in the style of Dan Kennedy, at a 12th grade reading level, it's going to be written to digital marketers that are Generation X, which is my age, entrepreneurs, technophobes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be a blog. It's going to be short. It's going to use um, a how-to post. It's going to include a title, keywords, a preview snippet with all of this stuff that I put in here. And we're going to go, and i got to turn the format on, and I want the presets on. We're going to talk about this in just a minute. Watch. This is the first time you're going to see this happen. Here we go. What did I get? A title, the top 10 elements that make a good funnel, unlocking the path to success. My keywords are here, funnel, marketing, conversion, sales, optimization, a preview snippet. Okay, what is a preview snippet? Well, that's working. We're going to go to groove.cm forward slash blog. You see this preview snippet? This is the title. This is the preview snippet. Consider that like the subject line of your blog, right? And when you click on the blog, you're going to notice you don't find that here anymore. It's gone, right? That's just so that I could get you to see what this blog post is about. Because if, if we gave you the beginning of the blog, right, sometimes you'll get a blog post that starts with, often in life, you may wonder, well, that's not intriguing. What you really want is a preview snippet that says, in this blog, you will discover, right? So we do that. Previous snippet here is, <laughs> you can see, discover, that it even knows. Discover the essential elements that transform your sales funnel into a powerful, oh, now I want to click onto that blog. And now we've got our entire blog post written right here. I'm going to go into my draft. I'm going to remove this little welcome to content copilot. I'm going to click here. And uh, as I told you, this didn't make it. It will be there when you get it. All the, the bold and everything will come in. And I just transfer everything over, right? Now I've got my, my blog. I've got my introduction. I might want to, you know, maybe uh, let's just make that a title tag like that, right? And then the introduction, might just get rid of the word introduction. And I might just make this an H1, you know, for uh, example. You, you guys, whoops, I didn't actually select that. <coughs> H3, H, just like that, right? And so now you add your image, you're, you're ready and you're ready to go and you share this with your team. But you may, this is gonna be one of the best things that we're going to have, guys, is you can highlight anything right here and right click, right? And what we're going to do is something you don't want to do in the prompting. You want to do as you're reading and you're like, you know what? It didn't give me enough information on this or this is too complex. This needs to be simplified or, 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 you could do all of these things. Highlight and simply say rewrite. Fix grammar and punctuation. More like this. Expand on this. So more like this means it gives you another way to say it. Expand on this expands on it. Make more concise. Make it longer. Simplify. Create an outline. Create talking points. Give an example. Create a metaphor. I'm always using that, right? An analogy, the Lenny situation, right? Imagine just being able to see something complex in your writing and say, relate this to a proverb. A maxim, an apple a day keeps the, the doctor away based on the text that you highlighted. Find a related allegory or parable. As Confucius would say, right? A wise man, etc. right? An allegory, we have that here. An aphorism <coughs> or an adage. Okay? So all of those you'll be able to simply, while you're in your document, just say, you know, expand on this. This is too much jargon. Simplify this. You'll even have an opportunity to put a custom prompt in, like explain it to an eight-year-old, right? You can just literally write it like that. And all that different type of stuff. Let's just say, um, let's just create another one here. I'm going to talk about a competitor here uh, just so that you could kind of understand. You know what? Let, let's not, we don't have to go to a competitor. Let's, uh, let's just say that we want to still use this here, but I want to uh, change it to... Um, uh, a blogger, <coughs> and let's do it like uh, Tim Ferriss. And I'm just going to click Apply, not Save, so I didn't have to create a whole new preset. I can slightly change it on the fly. I'm going to do a blog post. Um, this time we're going to do um, uh, <coughs> a listicle. I don't need any of this stuff for this, this point right here. Uh, I'll just click Engaging, Style, um, uh, creative and goal will be uh, increased conversions, whatever. Um, and I'm just going to now put right here, watch this. 
You guys all heard of the, the, the product called uh, Trello. Uh, let me see here. T-R-E-L-L-O. And again, I'm just a pro team. No prompt engineering needed. All right? So while that's writing, I want to now show you uh, an example. I'm just going to open up like uh, another one. Phil, same. That was a, you could tell my mind while I'm talking and typing. It's supposed to be final. Right? So we got our blog post on Trello. Right? But I'm going to click stop. Oh, it's done. Now look, I can click regenerate response or create an additional response. Now, guys, here's the key. Watch this. If I just say something right now, like, I thought Trello was for email. <coughs> now watch what's going to happen. It's writing a blog post. Why? Because we've hacked the system prompt and told it to all of this information was put into the system prompt. But jeeps, I just want to go into conversation mode with you for a second. Oh, I've got to shut off the format. I just want to be in a conversation. Now, <coughs> see, I apologize for any confusion. It's wondering, like, it's even asking itself, why in the world did I say this? Trello is not primarily for email. But guess what, guys? It's still talking like Neil Patel to Generation X people. If I want to strip to straight, straight chat GPT, I can go here. And you're noticing it's changing up here as well because these work together. So now it's not even talking to this person. If I just want to quickly go into chat GPT mode, I can go here. But I want the format mode because I, I want the recipe, right? I don't want to go into chef mode. I want quick microwave mode. So watch what we can do here now. I can sit, simply go to bullet points now. And I go to bullets, and I got my presets and my format back on. And I'm going to choose a framework for my bullet. I love the feature, advantage, benefit, benefit of the benefit framework. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, I forgot my camera was on. I'm sitting here talking to you guys like this, and I'm like, oh, shoot, my camera's on. Get in performance mode, Mike, for crying out loud. Um, I'm going to put right here, same thing, Trello. I don't have to even say write me bullets because I'm in format mode and I'm talking to the right avatar, Trello. <clears throat> Look at this. I've got my, uh, my feature advantage benefit bullets. Uh, now, to me, that's a little bit of a bug. In my, uh, I don't think it made it in there that I gave the guys the prompt. It's supposed to allude to the feature advantage benefit framework, not say feature advantage benefit, but that's okay. You kind of get the point. Take a look at this. Boom. <coughs> Send that over. And there we go. Now, you know what? I don't need more than these three. I kind of think that I want some new bullets. So what do we do? We change the framework. Let's get some pain and relief and just go more right? Or create additional, or just say it again, Trello. <coughs> and then when I'm done, I might, I, uh, oh, the other thing that I can do, guys, let's just let this finish. I can highlight just what I want and hit move over or send all, okay? But let's just say I want just, uh, let's just move them all over for now, right? And what, whatever, right? I'm, I want to get rid of these bullets. And let's try and go with, ooh, curiosity bullets. Uh, give me three more. <coughs> right? And then when I'm done, give me two more in the teaser or the feature benefit or a click hammer, rational emotional. And more, it just keeps going on and on and on. Stats and facts. 50% of users that don't use project management software uh, fail to reach deadlines, right? upset their staff members, are lower rated on the team, et cetera, right? Guys, do you see how powerful this is gonna be? Because you're gonna be able to say, I want a little like this, a little bit like this. And then when you're done, you can simply take this blog post and go like this, open a new tab like this, and say, write me an email 
to promote this blog post, right? And then I put the blog post in there like that. <coughs> oh, Artie, this, uh, this needs to expand. Artie, if you're watching, when I pasted, it didn't make this larger. It kept the input size like this, so I don't really see everything that's, uh, I don't have more room to write, but you kind of get uh, the, the thing here, folks, right? We'll get that uh, fixed, right, right? Three weeks out, early access beta doesn't come until September 5th. I want to change this uh, email um, to uh, <coughs> an announcement about my blog or newsletter, right? And I'll do all the conversational stuff, et cetera. And now it's going to actually take that prompt and write an email promoting this blog. Folks, if you've noticed not once that I have to sit there going, act like a product, blah, 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 and all that type of stuff. I could put a little more prompt engineering here if I need to, but for the most part, this is just protein, okay? So let's see if I've missed anything uh, here. Oh, I didn't even tell you. Remember the knowledge base before? <clears throat> well, look at this. I can impo import a knowledge base if I want to work on that I've just created with all of that information. And then I got a dial here. Now, if I set it to zero, it's acting without the knowledge base. I've temporarily shut the knowledge base off, and you see it says world knowledge. If I slide it up to 100, it's 100% knowledge base. If I ask it how to bake a cake, it won't know how. If I move it to 50-50, it's using the knowledge base and its world knowledge. This leans towards the knowledge base. This leans heavier towards the world knowledge. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to go through some things. I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. <coughs> We've got, um, oh, check this out. You can take this and export as a PDF. We're also going to have export as HTML um, and, uh, and a Word document as well, which I don't really see the need. You can just copy and paste and send it to a Word document, but we'll probably you know, export to your, your Google Doc and things like that. Rename, duplicate, delete, et cetera. Um, your presets, we went over that. We spoke about just adding the protein. There's no need to be a prompt engineering specialist. All of the formats and frameworks um, you saw here are dynamic for every single one of these uh, different 30 different things that, or so that you have here. Uh, we so spoke about how you can optimize it for SEO, direct response, creativity, or default. We've spoke about how you can get your output to be in bold and that can transfer over to your document. Um, spoke about how, like, if you just want to ask it a question, like, you know, uh, oh, I thought Ben Franklin was a president, and you want the response to be no, he was a founding father. It's going to write it as an email. So if you want to go into straight just chat mode, uh, and Artie, why don't we do this? When, when, they, when they click this, maybe we have it say chat mode, and then when they click back, it goes to format mode, something like that. Um, document editor and folks, <coughs> all right. I'm going to take a sip here. I'm a little parched. Probably look at my face. Two hour mark. Coming up to 3.30. That is Content Copilot. We're going to be taking all your questions in just a minute. But really, you can see the difference here that you can work with a knowledge base. You can share with people on your team. Share with a client. And your client can can edit this if he wants, or you could say read only, and give them all of the assets. This is called Content Copilot. We're gonna be coming up with Content Autopilot after you season all this stuff, which you can't do with the others, and you're gonna be able to go in and tick off all of the assets that you want. I want an email, a blog post, seven day follow up series, five day card abandon, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna tick everything off. It's gonna say, come back in an hour. And when you come back in an hour, all 32 assets are going to be built in for, here for you, including soon building out your actual brand website and putting the copy in the brand website and uh, making you a marketing funnel that you click a link and it imports the funnel with the copy and images into group pages. That's coming. So you have Content Copilot I just showed you. We're going to do Content Autopilot, which is literally ticking off everything you want to build a campaign. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to charge your client $3,000 for this, and you're going to make them wait a week. Because if you give it back to him in 10 minutes or 30 minutes that it takes for this to work in the background, he's going to say, hey, wait, wait a second. I just paid you three grand. Yeah, it's great stuff. Well, you can't possibly give me good information for you know, 30 minutes, right? 
And it's, it's the old thing. And the guy comes down, and the team has the, uh, the entire assembly line has been broken for three days. There's no air conditioning. Everybody's sweating. They've lost $200,000 in production. And then one guy comes in, and he, uh, they said, please, can you help us fix it? Please, I need you to fix it. I, I'm paying my workers. Nobody, we haven't had any production for three days. Truckers are leaving. The train is stopped at the station. We can't fulfill any of our products. The guy comes in. He goes, oh, here's the problem. And here's your, your bill, sir, $4,000. He goes, $4,000? All you did is turn a screw. And the guy's answer is, well, it's $10 to turn the screw. It's $3,900 to know what screw to turn, right? And so <coughs> in, in that sense, to avoid that from your customers, saying to you, hey, you knocked this out. You, you might, you might want to make them wait a week before you get the copy back to them. I'm making a joke. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like how powerful this is that something that would take you know, a, a month to produce to a client can be done at least in what we call the first, uh, whoops, I clicked on the wrong thing, at least what we call the first draft mode, right? You don't have, if you notice, there's not a save button here. Everything is instantly saved to the database as you type. Instantly saved like a Google Doc. So you can't lose any of your work. All right, let's go now back to the slides. Back to reality, what song was that? Back to reality. Somebody put that in the chat if you remember, because I can't, I can't come up with it. All right, do me a favor, everybody. Instead of putting that in the chat, but if you know the name of that song, Back to Reality. Is that Eminem? <coughs> I think it's Eminem. Thank you, Donna. <coughs> Lose yourself. That's it. Donna, got, Donna, you get the prize. You get the prize. All right. Do me a favor, guys. <coughs> uh, yes, you get a free. Don't upset the users. Uh, uh, folks, if you, if, you, if you can, do me a favor. Um, permission to kiss my butt. No, but seriously, um, in all honesty, in terms of your expectations, exceeding your expectations, meeting your expectations, or being underwhelmed, compared to Jasper.ai, the other tools that you've seen, or ChatGPT, do me a favor, put the higher you are to 100, that means you're probably overhyped and you have no room for criticism in your life, but I'm begging you for 100. Uh, but uh, closer to zero means you are not impressed. So do me a favor, put a number in the chat. Uh, let me know how, how you feel on a scale from one to 100, how, uh, how you feel about Content uh, Copilot. So um, we have, uh, so we have somebody that was slightly unimpressed. We'll, we'll say his name in just a minute because it's, uh, it gave us a 30, but that's okay. I won't say your name. Uh, then we got 100. Um, from Joffrey, uh, we got a hundred from Martin uh, Schofusen. Uh, Nestor gives a ninety. One hundred and ten from Christine Hooper. Uh, Michael Ray, hundred. This is crazy. Ty Anderson, a hundred. Uh, Michael G. Uh, just put that number in again. If you really feel it was thirty, that's cool. Uh, but if you can send me uh, a reason, maybe you could give us feedback why you weren't as impressed as everybody else. But I certainly. Respect, respect your opinion because I haven't seen all the other tools out there. Maybe you know something we don't. Um, we got 100. Uh, D, D I S D <coughs> says this is better than expected by a mile. 100. 100 by Y uh, Ern Seelin. 100 expectations exceeded uh, by Todd uh, Zismowski, uh, Prelit Selg. You guys got the best names. 101. James Knopp gives me 100. Um, David Garvin, 100 plus, blown my mind, Daryl. And guys, this is the most active chat I've ever seen. Um, I'm not kidding you. I, I have to take a screenshot because I can't actually show you this um, because it doesn't show the, the stuff here. So I'm going to take a screenshot. Uh, where is my screenshot software? Right here. I'm going to take a screenshot of this and actually uh, bring it onto the screen here. That's one. And then we're going to go all the way to, to Yolanda and get more of you guys. I gotta find Yolanda. And this is the second half right here. <coughs> and then we're gonna go to John Richards. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Now I'm not kidding you guys, I am not kidding. This is the most engagement that we have ever, ever seen. We've gotten three people here, just so you see the hundreds, 101, th th that you, you know I wasn't making this up here. Uh, you guys are really impressed, that's page one. Here's page two, and here's page three, if you want to know why I can't read uh, you know, all of them. Look, 
hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. Some of you are saying 75, right? Closer to 75 just because so much has been promised and it seems, well, we're not going to, you know, uh, I'd rather deal with that person there. Uh, let me actually just read that without giving their name, though, um, <clears throat> because let's see. I got to be able to find my my chat uh, here again. Questions, let's pop them out. Now let's just uh, do that one. Um, okay, so uh, lady with the MC, it says, closer to a 75 just because so much has been promised and it seems like this is super base level, but otherwise what I need yesterday. Okay, look, uh, that, that is uh, an, an opinion, and opinions are important to the people, and they're always correct because they're important to you. And our job, um, Maureen, is to make you, uh, is to over-deliver. As we said from the very, very beginning, we got this idea in February. We, st we, we started the backup program in, fe in February. Uh, because of the money that we got from the backers in April, we started developing in, uh, in February. We started developing in April. April, May, June, July, August. In five months, we built this. It, we built an entire platform on the first part of it. We're going to talk about what's coming next, but as we told you, what would be coming September, and that was our promise to you, would be early access beta. So yes, we promised a lot, but we also did promise it would be early access beta. But let's move on, <coughs> and you guys loved it, and that was uh, Content Copilot. What else are you going to be able to do besides writing content like emails, websites, funnel copy, blogs, and articles? You, you'll be able to write and debug code if that's important to you. Uh, you'll be able to create brand websites and funnels at the click of a button. A very similar user interface to this, you're going to answer 30 questions about your business or create a knowledge base and then say what colors you want and it'll create the pages, the blocks, the images, the copy, everything. You click the link, import it into first groove pages, then later possibly Webflow and Figma. Okay? <clears throat> Will we do click funnels in high level? Who knows? I don't know. I doubt it. Um, but who knows? Right? But you will be able to export in raw HTML. You're going to be able to do all different types of images, like you see with DAL E, D A L L E, DAL E, which is part of OpenAI, or Midjourney, or Stability AI has something called Stable Diffusion. We're going to be bringing that in this quarter. Um, you'll be able to do um, music APIs are coming, voice to text, so you can upload your voice and have it transcribed. Text to voice is coming. Again, all of these things are are APIs that we could plug into and create the interface for us and create workflows for you. Text to video uh, is coming. Um, as we just said, you know, creating books, reports, freemiums, longer form content, which is a job we'll post in the background because of, again, the Lenny problem, the token windows. We have to go and uh, it, it's a special way to do these different things. I'm not a big fan about creating a book because you really didn't write it, but there are going to people going to want people that that want it, and we're going to provide all that for you. So let's talk about the project um, just real quick. We're not going to go too deep into this. Let me just load up another page, but only for the sake of time. And we've gone over this in the past, but I'm I'm on another screen over here, and I am going to. Uh, oh, Donna, you know what? <clears throat> Oh, we did do the redirect. I think I forgot to tell Lucia to do the redirect. I had so many things going on. But it, okay, thank you. So that's been done. And um, uh, tell Lucius he left the block out that's supposed to leave. He asked me about it. And I told him under the video I wanted the block that said, see the project mind map. So he removed that. Do you know the one I'm talking about, Donna? <clears throat> yeah, okay. It's just a block he needs to drag. Um, I'm going to tell you how you can get access in just a minute, folks. Um, I just uh, am looking up uh, a page. Uh, page. All right. <clears throat> so this right here, I'm going to uh, go into MindMeister. And I'm going to show you the mind map and show you basically like what we promised and what we've actually uh, uh, delivered on so far. <clears throat> All right, uh, Groove.ai, this is the backer project, <clears throat> okay? And we're going to collapse this, and these are the different AI APIs we said that we're working with. Um, MVP phases, what we said would be phase one, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
uh, you know, what we'd be putting out by first release. And remember, again, if you feel that we didn't quote deliver, we had said phase two would be images. And again, that's after September. Phase three will be websites and all of these different things. So we've just released the first phase. But let's look at the app just to walk you down memory lane. Some of the things that we said, remember, we, I said we're going to have styles, pre-trained styles in the style of Gary Halbert and you know, bloggers and direct response. We ended up coming up with 30 of those different things. You can actually train it with your own voice. Act like, remember we said act like a direct response marketer. Multiple drop downs for the tone, right? Friendly, goal, <coughs> witty. Oh, one of the things that I, I think was missing here uh, is that we have the goal. That, that wasn't in the drop down. Oh, no, we did have the goal. I think it, no, it did have the goal. It was even there. I even forgot. That was right here, right? So as you can see in the mind map, when we said, I, I just said tone. We added tone, styles, goals, right? Rules, positive and negatives. I showed you all of that. Um, let's see. Um, these are the settings panels, right? For, you know, for how you can share with your teams. We went over that. Um, that you will have projects, right? Um, we said that you would have a composition, which is this, having different compositions, okay? And the ability to clone those, uh, the competition. Share all parts like a Google Doc. Clone, create a knowledge base. <coughs> the knowledge base would have the ability for you to write something, paste, a URL, an RSS feed, a YouTube URL, an audio file, a video file, and add relevance for each one of those things. And that ended up being here. Okay, um, I'm pretty proud of what we did in five months, guys, right? <clears throat> the Chrome extension, which is right here. There's a Chrome extension that was built that will follow you around the web that you're going to be getting for free for attending this webinar today. Okay, we built this at the same time. This is in the Chrome store hidden from search until after this webinar. And I'm going to activate and I'm going to show you how you can get it at the end of this webinar. OK? <clears throat> um, it'll do subject lines, emails, blogs. Look at this. Subject line, emails, blogs, right? All those different types of things. I, th I think we did a good job. I'm being f quite frank with you. The user interface. What did I say? The screen would have a primer for a knowledge base. Some words I didn't even know how to use. I was calling them primers. Um, it would have uh, the compose feature that we said, the competitions, so you could have multiple tabs with the save it into a project, clone the project, all those different types of things. Uh, <clears throat> so what's to come? We're going to have power apps will be coming. So more task-driven apps, like simply load up a video and have it break it into uh, TikTok videos, or load up a webinar replay and have it write the timestamps for you, things like that. Apps, those are going to be coming. Tasks and workflows, let's, things like, uh, gosh, I don't even know if we need some of these things because we have them. Um, you know, like create keywords. I think we can do most of this with, with uh, content copilot. Content summary, like summarize this YouTube video. You can pretty much do that right now. You know, uh, honestly, you, you create a knowledge base. That's all you got to do. We've got this now. You create a knowledge base and you say summarize, right? Um, we're going to have the ability for you to store prompts. Um, not that I even know, because we're pretty much going you know, without the need of prompts at this time. Uh, but if you want to keep prompts for different conversations, we're going to have a, a prompt library. <coughs> uh, YouTube video workflows to generate shorts, clips, and things like that. Um, autonomous agents, those are things. This is going to be for content autopilot. Uh, a bot that will just build out an entire campaign or websites for you. You'll have image and art. You'll have video. Uh, all these voice things, text to voice, voice to text, coding, music, uh, et cetera. All right, so that's all coming as I showed you here. So I think we delivered on what we promised. We said phase one, right, that uh, we would get these different things uh, built out. Right, the, the user interface for the content copilot. Phase two is going to be images. Phase three, websites and funnels. Phase four, text to voice. And phase five, uh, code, video, and more as they come, and different tasks, etc. <clears throat> now, the pricing, um, as you know, the pricing, let's talk about how to go there right now. You can simply go to groove.ai.com. That's all you've got to do. 
And that's gonna take you to get access. There's a 10 minute video. This video was 100% written by AI. That's an AI voiceover. It's not my voice, that's an AI voiceover. That's technology that's gonna be coming to Groove. But currently, we use 11 Labs. And HeyGen is a company <coughs> that did my avatar. Now, we're probably never gonna do something like that. So this is a quick, quick little recap video. Give you some feature benefits. All of this was written by Groove.ai. Here are some screenshots, but we just went over it, right? Our price, when we launch later this year, it's gonna be 99 a month with no teams and only three knowledge bases, and 299 a month with uh, 25 team members, 25 knowledge bases, uh, <coughs> and 25 projects. And 499 will be unlimited. You could get it right now for just one payment of 897 or two payments of just $497, right? Um, previous lifetime customers of Groove.cm get $100 free AI credits, so you can use our API instead of yours. $100 worth of credits, Ch credits are so cheap, you can write a 1,000 word email every single day, 365 days for a century, from the day you're born till you're 100 years old, and that would only cost you $100. The credits are ridiculously cheap. Uh, you're saving from using a lot of other tools. Uh, all this information here is for you here. And you're going to notice, let me take a little sip, that everything is here for you. You can get started. The early access beta is released literally less than three weeks from today. One, two, three weeks from today, right there, is the release where we start giving it out to our users. Um, just looking over here. Okay, yeah, we start giving it out to our users, about 1,250 users at a time, and September 8th, we are done releasing it to all of our users. Summary of what you get, and now, I wanna talk to you about the custom white label, but first, this is a one-time payment, you'll have lifetime access, $897, or pay 100 bucks more, and go for $497, okay? And then, there's an option. <coughs> um, ooh, Donna, we got a problem here. <coughs> Let me fix this real quick. Or maybe, maybe that's the way that we set it up, I believe. But let me just go into the product here. <coughs> I may not have set it up for the different price points, so uh, just bear with me a second while we actually do that right now. Uh, I'll, I'll knock it out real quick. Uh, just got to, uh, we're going to go to Groove.ai. It'll take half a second. We're going to go to Manage Products. We're going to go into here. We're going to go to uh, Order Bumps. And we're going to see that for this one, <coughs> I created it. Yeah, Donna, if you can, if you can just copy, 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 copy for, for these right here. All right? We just got, I'll, I'll turn this one on, and I'll turn uh, this one on uh, as well. All right. <coughs> Uh, and then, you know, we have that legacy one over here, Donna, the, um, not that we'll ever use it, but, you know, the, the little PayPal one that we had, if you just want to repeat it there. Okay, but so what you're going to see, guys, when you're checking out <coughs> um, uh, is a white label option. Right now, it's only available on the 897 in about five minutes. It'll be available on the 497. As you just see, I never activated it for that price point. So what that means is that if you want to own a white label version of this software. And I'm gonna give you an example of what is a white label. If you look at a company called clickdesigns.com. Um, <coughs> Click Designs, I believe, yeah, right here, right? This is a product by Mo Latif, okay? And I liked it so much, I asked him to create me a white label. Mine is located right here at GrooveDesignerPro.com. And let's see. And when I do that, and I take up uh, this one, you see side by side, these two are the same thing. When you go to log into Click Designs, you get a login that looks like that. When you go to log into Groove Designer Pro, you get an identical login. In fact, it's everything here is identical. The only difference is, if you log in here, 
your login to Click Designs. You could use a login and show up at either one of the accounts because they're mutual accounts. So what that means, okay, is that we're going to allow you to white label our software as well. And so what you should do, if you want to white label, you'll click this box at checkout. Now, if you are already a backer, don't worry. I'm going to give you a link where you could, where you could buy this as well today. <laughs> All right? So you pay nothing today, even prior backers. I'll tell the prior backers right now so they can see. That's groove.ai forward slash white label. So if you've already backed this project and become a backer, you can go to groove.ai forward slash white label, and you can uh, back this right now. It costs nothing because the white label will come out in December, and we won't start charging you until January. It's four ninety seven a month, okay? And even if you're buying today and you pay eight ninety seven or the four ninety seven, it is free for the first five months because you don't get access to it until December. We start charging you in January. And then after that, you'll have your own software company like I do with Groove.ai, and instead of paying $30,000 a month for developers and a team of marketers and copywriters and everything, your total investment to own a software company is $497 a month. I'm essentially giving you a franchise, like a Subway franchise, where you partner with us 50-50 on the profits. <coughs> and you don't have to do anything. You'll pay $497 a month. What you need to do is buy a domain name like coolai.com or you know, contentai.com or whatever you think is cool. And you can actually compete with me because you're partnering with me. And for $497 a month, when you're checking out, simply take that option, make sure to tick this box. We're not gonna charge you anything. You could cancel at any time if you decided this wasn't for you. But you will be able to go in, make it a dark mode app, change the app to your brand color of peach or whatever the case is. And then you'll put your logo up here, up at the top. And then people will log in instead of seeing groove.ai, they're going to see con coolcontent.ai because that was your, your app. Or zapcontent.ai, whatever you choose. We're not only going to do that for you, we're also going to give you an entire web brand website, marketing funnels, and a video that you can have for your website. We're going to take care of all of the payments for you. And we're going to split the profits with you 50-50. We'll pay you monthly. And so if you take a look over here, remember we said that the price points are going to be 99 and 299. Well, 299 plus 199 is like 300 plus 100 is 400. The average price point will be in the middle. That's about $200 will be the average because half the customers will take $99. The other half will take the $299. So on average, the average customer is going to be worth about $200 to us. And we're going to split that 50-50. So that means the average customer to you is going to be worth $100. Now, we handle all of the development, all of the updates, all of the sales, all of the support, and you just do the marketing. So instead of being an affiliate for us, have your own SaaS company for $4.97. And then we'll split the profits with you 50-50. And on average, just 100 customers can net you, because 100 people paying you $100 a month will get you $10,000 per month. You could go around doing demos, go to companies, go, and show the uh, different people how you can use this. Get 50 people in there, you'll be making $5,000 a month in recurring income. Get five people and it's paying for itself, all right? That's a white label option. If you have any set of influence like me, if I would have seen somebody doing this, like back in the day, if somebody said, here's ClickFunnels, but you can have a white label of it, I would have jumped on it. As you've seen with high level, go high level, they came out with a white label option, everybody went crazy. We said, hey, we'll do the same thing for you guys if you want it. So you can buy it and use it. Buy it and use it, that's $497 times two payments, or one payment of $897. And if you want the white label, just check that at checkout. All right. I'm going to refresh this page. <coughs> I'm going to see if that went live yet. Yes. Now the 497 option, you can choose the white label as well. Okay. Let's read on the white label. I'm just going to read this. Own your own SaaS company. Dive into the lucrative world of software entrepreneurship. Harness Groove.ai's cutting edge capabilities as the backbone of your very own software as a service venture. Establish, scale, and thrive in a digital realm. 
Recurring revenue stream, capitalize on consistent monthly income, fostering financial stability and growth as users continue to subscribe to brand your AI solution. So if you're one of those people that likes to teach people how to use ChatGPT, well, get this for $4.97 a month and teach people how to do AI with your own software platform and actually make money with us. It's a turnkey website and sales assets. As I said, we've got you covered from A to Z. You get the benefit of us creating professionally crafted websites and high converting promotional videos tailor-made for your white label solution, ensuring you hit the ground running with maximum impact. All you need is a $10 domain and a logo. We'll even create the marketing funnels for you. Personalized branding, make Groove.ai genuinely yours. Customize your logo, colors, user interface, to echo your brand's ethos. Who do you think wrote this copy, guys? Groove.ai did. Have it run your, on your own domain. We handle the development and the support. Enjoy a specialized support team dedicated solely to your white label users, ensuring smooth operations and happy clients. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Donna, I don't hear you. So I'm going to... I froze. <coughs> I'm back. <coughs> okay. Dedicated support. You enjoy a specialized support team. Okay, it was a bad internet spike, but we're back. It happened in the whole building. Enjoy a specialized support team dedicated solely to your white label users, ensuring a smooth operations and happy clients. Hands-free operations. As I said, we handle, I read this one here for before you. All of the development updates, sales support, then we split the profits with you. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the board, Jeopardy. Let's take a look at the FAQ. What is Groove.ai white label opportunity? Groove.ai white label opportunity allows individuals or businesses to run their own SaaS companies or agencies with the Groove.ai platform brand under their own. You can buy up to three white labels, but that's it. How customizable is the white label? You can customize completely to fit your brand's aesthetics, including the dark theme, the light theme, or both, your logo, and adjust the theme colors. Who handles the back-end process like updates, payments, and support? Groove Digital. We handle everything. Will I get any tools to customize the software? Yes, you'll have uh, access to an admin panel where you can customize it. What are the costs involved? You pay nothing today. You start getting billed in January. Just say, I'm in. We're only going to be selling a limited number of these white labels. So this white label is not something we're going to be doing forever. So either get in or, just, or you're not going to get in. And uh, that might price, if we keep it longer, may go to $24.97. You know we're not kidding with that. Groove pages and Groove.cm started a lifetime at $4.97. It went to um, $13.97, $14.97, then $19.97, then $24.97, then $29.97, and now it's $4,000. So I can promise you this will probably be $2,497 uh, a month for a white label soon. You can get in now for nothing. The price for the white label is nothing today. Again, if you already back the project and you're a Groove backer, go to Groove.ai forward slash white label. All of you will just go to Groove.ai and you'll see this page. <clears throat> then in January, you'll pay $4.97 a month. How is the profit split? The price points for the software are $99, $299, $499 $4.99 a month. After deducting the merchant processing fee, about 3% because we're actually partners, profits are split 50-50. On average, you can expect a customer be worth about $200 a month, granting you a profit at 50-50 of $100 per month per customer. 100 customers is 10,000 a month. 1,000 customers will net you 100 grand a month. What is the potential income with a white label? Well, consider an average value of 200 per customer, as we just said, at 50-50. That means it nets you $100 with 100 customers is 10,000. Can I run an affiliate program with the white label? Standard. Uh, uh, standardly, I think that's a typo. <coughs> affiliate program, that should be sadly, I think. Affiliate programs are not permissible with the white label. However, if you are a major influencer, like you, like you are a legit you know, person, you know, like uh, you, you, you follow what I mean, like you're running live events. Let's put it this way. If you run live events, if you're that type of person uh, and have that type of influence where you're doing your own live events and that type of stuff, uh, you contact us and we'll make an adjustment. We'd have to custom do something for you. And at that point, you'd be able to have affiliates. When is the white label going to be re released? You'll get access in January 2024 and then your payments start. What happens if I can't maintain my white label? Well, if for any reason you can't maintain your white label, 
uh, your customers will be transitioned over to us, meaning we just don't pay you the profits, but there's a grace period. And uh, you know, if you recover or come back and want to start paying again, yeah, we'll just reactivate it for you and start sharing the profits from then moving forward. Any profits when you are delinquent, if you skip for three months or whatever the case may be, we'll leave the site up and running, but you don't share in the profits that uh, those months. Uh, <coughs> can I sell? Um, and we may revoke it uh, after 90 days if you don't make a payment for 90 days. Can I sell or transfer my white label account? Absolutely. Your white label account is both transferable and sellable. If you find a buyer and transfer the ownership is allowed. You've got a business that's making you 10 grand a month and somebody wants to write you, um, you know, that's $120,000 a year and somebody wants to write you a check for 300 grand, sell it to them. Is there a limit to the number of white label accounts I can own? Yes, you can have up to three. Would Groove Digital potentially buy my white label? Um, indeed, we consider it. If you have over 100 paying customers and you've been doing it for more than a year, it means there's recurring income, we might consider just buying it from you. Um, is there a grace period for the monthly payment? Yes, you won't start your monthly payments until January 2024, which is when the software will be released to you. So that's it on the white label. So again, just go to Groove.ai. If you're not a backer, and then scroll down <coughs> to the bottom of the page and choose your option for $897 or 497 and Mike is about to go rogue. It's about to go rogue. Who sung that, Donna Fox? It's actually, it's about to go down. Um, I've got a little uh, surprise for you here, folks. <coughs> um, if you see this little thing here, it says looking for happy hour. I don't know if that page is still up. I'm going to click it and see what happens. <coughs> uh, look at that. I've just made it happy hour. If you want to get in for four payments of $250, this is the only time I'm going to say it on the webinar. If you're not paying attention, and say, wait, I heard something about I could pay just 250 bucks today. Yeah, there's a, an optional I, a option right here. How do you find it? At Groove.ai, just go to Groove.ai, go down to the checking section. It's going to redirect you to get access. You go down to the checkout. Underneath right here, it says looking for happy hour. Click here. I've just given you a little back door that you can get it for a thousand bucks. It's just four payments of 250. 250 bucks today and then that's it. And then you pay another 250 in September, another 250, well, if you bought in August, then September, October, November, and then you're done and you own lifetime to this software. Or you can just wait until it comes out September 1st and pay $299 a month. So it's four payments of 250 or in perpetuity, at 299, I think you gotta get either one of these. So there you go. You've got the option, folks, to get it for 897, 497, or the happy hour is 250, and you can even go here with the white label again. That you wouldn't even have any payments even here because this would be August, September, October, November for your four payments of of the the installment. No payment in December, and then you would start with your white label access and, of course, the software access <coughs> at that point. Very important. I made a big mistake. I should have said this. If any of you go to the white label and buy the white label, I hope you read this. That is for backers only. You must back the project to buy it. So if you went to the white label page and just uh, sign this up, go to our help desk and ask for, or just go back the project you know, at, at Groove.ai. The white label is only available to backers, all right? So that's your choice. Become just a backer at $897 one time, two payments at $497, or four payments at $250. Alternately, if you've already done that and you want to become a white label partner, go to groove.ai forward slash white label. If you haven't, choose your payment plan at $897, $497. The happy hour gives you the, two, the four payments at $250. And optionally, if you want to wait five months until January, to get your, uh, your white label option, you can do that as well. And we'll start billing you when we release the software to you. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the slides here. Uh, I have to look for this. That's the project. That was the offer. That's how to buy. That was the white label. And we spoke about how to buy. We're gonna do the FAQ and then give you a free gift. And then we're wrapped up. We're two hours and 30 minutes almost into this webinar. I'm going to load up the FAQ screen here, and let's see what my team has for me. <clears throat> okay. 
let's see, what is the name of that document? I have something called live stream. No, outline, that was for me. Groove.ai, okay, found it. Let's bring this in so that we can read it at the same time for me. Uh, these are, uh, wow, we did a good job. You guys pretty much just get it. These are the questions. Let's get right into it. Let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, from Rob, will a chat feature be added to create chat widgets? So if you want to create something like we have right here, yes, all you're gonna do is create a knowledge base like I showed you, and then we're gonna, uh, uh, just like you see with chat base, say, how do you want it to act? Like a customer service agent and answer only qu the questions that are there. We're gonna give you a widget, you put it on your page, on a group page, a WordPress, a ClickFunnels, a high level, you name it. And then you're gonna have a little widget just like this that you can customize, and yes, that is gonna be included as well. And if you went to just chat base, you're gonna be paying like 100 bucks a month for something like that. <coughs> just for a chat widget. All right, next question from Paul. Guys, you got two minutes to get your questions in, and then we're wrapped and we're going to the free gift. Because if I don't see it here, we're calling it a day with the webinar. It looks like we did a pretty good job. Paul says, will we need an account at each place and have our own API keys for each service? OpenAI, NVIDIA, Nemo, Stability. Look, if you want to use all of those, I'm gonna be straight up front with you guys. I think OpenAI kicks butt. And if somebody goes better than them, it's gonna be a month until they're better. You really can just use OpenAI. But if you're a geek, we're gonna have a list and it'll say, get your free API key here because you don't have to pay a credit card to get it, was what we mean by free. And you'll click, you'll go in, you put in your email address, and you'll get your own API key, and you'll paste it in. Right, it's like creating a Stripe account or a PayPal account. And a Stripe account is free, and a PayPal account is free until you use it. And so, uh, again, 100, a, a, a thousand words every single day for a century is what it costs you $100 at 3.5, uh, ChatGPT 3.5. If you upgrade to that best version, ChatGPT 4.0, you put in your own API key. Well, a thousand words every day for a decade. Okay, sorry, not a century, a decade. It's gonna cost you a hundred bucks. The price is near, near non-existent, right? Um, so, um, yeah, so that's your choice, Paul. I would recommend OpenAI, and then if you feel like, hey, I want the, I want the images from Dali, try it, a man standing in a rainforest, and then hit the drop down, go to, a mid journey, a man standing in a rainforest, and then go to stability.ai, and then compare the three, then that'll be your choice, right? Um, from Marion, will Groove.ai deliver source information as well? I don't know what that means, Donna, maybe you can help me, so I'm gonna go to the next one, and Donna will uh, if, see what that means, but uh, not sure exactly what that means. <coughs> if you mean will it work like ChatGPT, yes. <coughs> Well, yeah, in order to do that, we have to, um, uh, we're gonna be adding a feature called search the web. And then yes, when we have a little feature that says search the web, which is essentially this, if we go to Google. Now guys, I have this little thing right here called search labs. When I click it, I've turned on AI in search, um, cool tips, all the add to sheets. And so essentially what that does is I can say, I can go right here, try AI powered search, and I get this now when I search, and if I simply, let me just see here, click reset, I can start a new conversation and say, who is Ben Franklin? And you're gonna see uh, that it's gonna give source results on the quote when you click on the little quote you'll get um, where the source came from. So we're gonna have something like that. That'll be in, that'll be an additional mode. Let's get out of this mode here. That'll be in a, in a like, just to, you know, for consistency in the demo, keep the colors right. That'll be something here where we may say search search engine, right? And include citations, right? So good question. Um, will Groove.ai deliver source information? Don, remember that, that situation I told you about Michelle um, having COVID? that she got tested, I'm, I'm starting to feel it. 
and it's going to be a real tough next 10 days for this launch for me. I'm starting to feel a little run down. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm doing a live stream from 11 to 3 every day next week, Monday through Friday, and then the following week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I've got nine live streams to do, and so pray for me. Thanks. All right, uh, Alan says, is there a word count limit on results? <clears throat> okay, now, that's known as the Lenny problem, right? So ChatGPT defaults your word limit to a context length of 1,000, okay, <clears throat> um, in terms of tokens. Um, there is always a Lenny problem. That's why you can't write a book without doing what we call the auto GP GPT. It needs to go in the background and keep prompting and prompting and prompting. So we are going to have ours automatically set, uh, not the temperature, uh, automatically set to 4,000 tokens as a maximum length. So it's, it's going to have the maximum number of tokens, which is 4,000 words. Um, which is pretty good. That's a lot more than you can, that's about four times more than you can currently get output with ChatGPT, but that is controlled by the model. And as that grows, it'll grow for you. Okay, good question. Um, many people ask, is there an ETA on one groove.ai where I will incorporate images into video? That will be in the fourth quarter of this year. So likely, likely um, around Thanksgiving. All right, because we gotta work on the white label uh, for you guys uh, as well. and. Uh, just a couple of other things. You know, we're going to be releasing, releasing it September 5th, and then there's a few more things we want to add to the content copilot, then we're moving on to phase two. Um, can you explain how tokens, fees, and credits work? Um, I, I, I can basically tell you that you're going, to be, you're going to be putting in your API key, so you can just go to... Um, uh, <coughs> I'm Googling cost of... of of open AI API, <coughs> and that goes to pricing right here, openai.com forward slash pricing. I'm gonna click on learn more, and then so here you, you can see. All right, so uh, the 32K, that's the context, that means this, can you talk to Lenny for 32 minutes or talk to him for eight minutes, right? That's just, you know, the, which model that you choose, and these are different models with the, you know, with G GPT 3.5, but that's why I said you can see that the, the, uh, the cost um, here, oh, they lowered the pricing. They lowered the pricing uh, to 0.06. But you can see it's, it's pretty cheap. And this isn't per token. This is for every 1,000 tokens, all right? So basically for every 1,000 words, it's 0 0.002 cents. That means for 10,000 words, it's 0.02 cents, uh, or two cents for, uh, for 10,000 words, uh, <clears throat> 20 cents for 100,000 words, and $2 for a million words. So you get it? It's a million words for $2, okay? And that, that price goes up a little bit more here, right? So again, you're gonna choose the model that you want. That's what makes our we don't have these weird pricing every time that you know goes up. You don't have to buy tokens and all this stuff. You're just gonna have your API and you're buying it at wholesale, right? That's the beautiful thing. All right, last question. Is there a way to organize your files and information? Yes, uh, when you go to the dashboard, um, you are gonna, there's gonna be something here called documents because you're also gonna be able to create just documents. And a document is like a project with just one document, um, you know. Uh, but at the dashboard, you're going to see that you have uh, your, uh, your pro recent projects here, your recent documents here. There'll be more information. We're going to build out a complete document. Um, we'll probably have, uh, Artie, if you're listening, we're probably going to have uh, uh, folders or categories above documents. So you might have like a big funnel document, like for me, called Groove.cm. Uh, internal for team, where all those projects are. And then there'll be one called Groove.ai, one called Fit Class, and one called um, Groove Agency, and one called uh, the Collective Mastermind. And then in there are sub-projects. So we will uh, have that. Good idea. I didn't think about that until just now. And that's, <coughs> that's it. Recap on the close. If you want to become a backer, go to Groove.ai. That's all you got to do. Just go to Groove. No more questions. I'm not going to look back at this doc. So Groove.ai, 
It'll redirect you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, as we just told you. You could become a backer today for one payment of $8.97. And you're done. You'll never pay anything. Yes, Donna? <coughs> I'll give the Chrome extension. I'll give the Chrome extension. <coughs> yeah, you got it. Okay. So if you didn't get your question answered, what Donna is saying is some questions aren't necessary for the, for the webinar, right? They might be like... Um, you know, whatever. Hey, I want to pay with two different credit cards. Can you help me? And she's like, Mike, don't end the webinar because uh, she hears me wrapping up, right? Those things don't, didn't need to go in, but they still need questions from the team. So if you had a question, we're going to leave that open uh, for you there. So now, um, again, go to groove.ai, and then when you get to the checkout section, you could pay in full for $897. You're done. You'll never pay us another payment again to run groove.ai. We'll continue to build it for you. You can go with two payments of $497. It costs you about $100 bucks more. And then we have this little option over here called happy hour, all right? And you click on that, and that gives you a payment option of four payments of 250 bucks. And then you pay, and you'll be a lifetime backer. If you don't click this, you're not going to get an option to do the white label. If you want the white label, click that button. You can cancel between now and January. Just reach out to us. You won't be billed, and you won't get the white label. But if it's something you think you want, and you want to partner with us and have your own SaaS company, make sure to click that button. You're not going to pay anything extra today. You're not going to pay anything extra tomorrow. You're not going to pay anything extra in September, October, November, or December either. You're not going to pay anything until January, and you won't pay anything until we release the white label version for you, hopefully at the end of December, but certainly in early January. Okay? But you'll get it before you pay. Um, and that's it. And if you've already backed the project, and you want just the white label, you're like, hey, not fair. I already backed it. No, we made sure we took care of you. You go to group.ai forward slash white label. White dash label. White dash label. I should have said that. And then you can just buy it right now for nothing. If you got any problems, just go to our help desk, please. Go to our help desk at support.groupdigital.com. If you're having problems paying, we will help you. We'll always reach out to you. You put this in. You don't pay anything today. Be in business. Just lock it up today if you're pretty sure you want this. Cancel if you need to. You're not going to get billed anything, no penalties. But if you keep it and you're excited, you're going to, you're going to own your own Groove.ai. You're going to have your own company. I'm not kidding you guys. I'm just going to say it. I showed this to Mark Ling the other day. Mark Ling literally said to me this, just like this. Mark, I hope you're okay with this. He goes, geez, you really know what you're doing here. Mike, I, th I was, we are creating a tool. I think, I think, I think I'm going to stop creating my tool and I think I'm just going to go with your white label. And then he's the one that said, will I be able to do an affiliate program? I was like, well, since you're a major influencer, we'll work something out. <clears throat> um, so you could see if you're of any person that, that if you're, let's put it this way. If you have the ability to be a good affiliate, you owe it to yourself to have something that you could build and it's an asset. You can sell this. Right? You actually own your own company. You're going to, have your, you're going to set up your own company, your own LLC, and have your own company with this and sell that LLC to somebody if you want. This is a true SaaS company. You're partnering with me and letting us do everything, and we split the profits 50-50. And then people might buy from you because you get better training, right? So there you go. If you got any questions, there's an FAQ at the bottom about the white label, about group.ai, about the backer, about the plan features, you know, are there any additional costs, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so now, we're coming up on the three-hour mark in 20 minutes, so let's wrap this webinar up. Thank you so much for staying. I promised you your own little mini version, if you're a Groove Dot version, not virgin, uh, your own mini version of Groove Dot AI's chat widget. There's a new version of this coming out in a couple of weeks, but as you can see, it works very similar. You're just going to click these three dots. Uh, add in your API key. You're not seeing my full API key. I never want to show you that. You choose your model, then you optimize it. It doesn't have all the features, but it's got, it's got some of them, most of them, right? Choose dark mode, choose what color you want, right? And then you click uh, the dots. Don't click the X that closes the extension. Click the dots again. Uh, let's, just, let's just make this demo better. Let's go to light mode and um, go here. And you don't have as many of these things. You have you have paragraph, blog post, email, outline, headline, subject line, grammar, translate, plagiarism, rewrite, bullets, e-commerce. You put in what you want. So we're going to write a blog post about Groove 
uh, funnels, right? You don't have all the frameworks, right? But you can, you can choose this, make it short. You can still have some of these things. Like I said, it's a light version. Generate the draft, and there you go. And when it's done, you simply click copy. So if you're inside of uh, you know, Groove. Uh, you know, Groove.cm uh, and you need a headline, so I'll just give you an example when this is done. And by the way, I clicked on short. <coughs> I'll open up another browser in the meantime and load that up to show you what I mean. Are you done yet writing? Yep, that looks like a short blog post. It should be done. <coughs> in conclusion, it's saying. All right, I copied a clipboard, and now I can just paste that if I was writing a blog in group blog or WordPress or whatever, right? Or an email, right? Let's say I was in group mail or anything else. But let's just say I was here, and I'm at my my website, right? And let's just say I needed a headline, right? Well, I just go into my Chrome extension here, I click on headline, and I say write a headline, uh, write a headline for a webinar about funnels. All right, look at this, make sure your selection here uh, be, uh, this is supposed to be for the easer, uh, email, that's a little bug. Uh, that should be for the email one, let me see here if what they have here. <coughs> yeah, so the headline got the email stuff and the email didn't get it. And this is, okay, here's your, your headline formula, how to achieve desired outcome. Uh, already if you're watching, the use urgency and the blind teaser was for email, and then this was only what we needed for headline, but that's okay. Uh, as I said, this is the first draft, we rushed to get it ready today. Uh, and uh, let's use urgency in the headline, let's see what happens. Let's put that in, generate a draft, Let's get our headline, discover the secret to funnel mastery. Um, and so it's writing a little more copy than I wanted for a headline. It looks like it's actually writing an entire webinar. So this, this needs a little bit of work. We didn't put as much into this, obviously. But here's my headline, at least. So I would just take that and literally paste that right into uh, my group page. You, you kind of see how that works. So, so that is uh, the Chrome extension. Now I'm gonna have my team activate that in the store, but if you wanna, if that might not happen for another hour, so let's just show you how to get it the easy way, the back door, you go to groove.ai forward slash extension. Just like that, groove.ai forward slash extension, you click on that, it opens up to Chrome, you click add to Chrome, it'll pop up here for a second and then disappear. And then you're not gonna be able to find it, you're gonna be like, where is it? Click on this little plugins thing, that's to show you all of your other plugins, and when you get down, you'll find it alphabetical order under G, and make sure that you have it pinned. You see, it's not showing because it's not pinned. When you find it, go there and click pin, and then just drag it right over into like that first position so you can find it, and there you go, guys. That's your gift for making it all the way to the end of this two hour and 50 minute webinar. I'm gonna just do one quick little thing and see if there's anybody to congratulate while we have you here. A lot of people like to wait till the end of the webinar, but let's just see if any of you just said, screw it, I'm in, I'm in, I want it. Let's see, we're gonna click on my transactions here. I'm going to <coughs> set this up so I don't show any emails. I'm going to filter this for only Groove.ai sales. <coughs> and let's get uh, only, we don't want any rebills. <coughs> and let's see, let's see what we got here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, making sure I'm not giving away anyone's personal information. All right, okay. Stick that there. Right, I want to make sure that your email wasn't shown. So we've got, um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I've got to go to 100 here <coughs> so that we could fit. Because even at 50, it would, there's 61 transactions. I'm going to, if you, you know, you guys can bounce out right now, but I've got a lot of people to, uh, to say hi to. Um, so uh, Martin Sassel, welcome to the Groove.ai backer program. Eric. Kuvolo, welcome to the Groove.ai backer program. Paid in full, both of you. Daniel took the two payment plan. Then, 
the second our backers. These were all of the people that already backed the project as soon as I showed them the white label. Boom, 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 boom. Alan Fleming, white label partner, Robert Sefman, Ricardo Montoya, Donald Smith, Kevin Streit, love you, Kevin, Casey Bond, Barry Page, Maureen Cunningham, Pierre Newell, Cameron A. Bailey Sr., Jodine Theron, Claudia Lowens, Steve Brown, Charles Sisk. I've got a smile on my face, you guys. Friggin' love you guys. We're gonna, we're the, I'm smiling not because you bought this. I'm smiling because we just became partners. We're gonna make money together, right? I don't want your 497. I can promise you that. Uh, you know, I'm gonna probably have to reach out to you like, hey, you're not making any sales. What are you paying for this? You already got this software. Stop donating money, right? But this, this is an opportunity for us to make money with a branded affiliate program. Terry Vincent became a backer paid in full. Uh, Mori, Mori Head Ak Curie. I apologize, best I could do. Uh, partner, Gary Yi became a backer today with the happy hour, and then he became a white label. Anthony Marshall took the white label. Carolyn Bayonne took the happy hour, became a partner with the white label. Kevin Yurker got in at the happy hour. Two more white labels for John Condit and Kevin. I'm going to have to go a little bit quicker here. I'm just going to say Tommy Alfin, Forrest Haw, Jeffrey Miller with the both. Kelty Harris, Lynn Thompson, Frank Bailey got in on both. Frank Health, Jonathan Baller on both. Richard Siena um, became a backer. Patty Hudson, white label partner. Robert Steffen, uh, both. Randy Diefel, Norm Robinson, Michael Lee, Fareed Senega, we've seen you on the uh, streams. Mark Forster, Michael Stagger, Sarah Bryant. Sarah, way to go, partner. Was just talking to her on Skype. Um, new friend of mine, Nestor Pabin. Uh, white label partner, John Jensen, Joe Veda, Orville Skeet, Kathy Guso, Victor Gonzalez, I'm blown away, uh, became a partner and backer, Sam Bonner, LeVar Jackson, partner and backer, Sam Bonner, partner and backer, and watch this, we've got to do it, somebody's going to be, hey, you didn't say my name, get in, click that button right now, put your credit card in, three, two, one, let's see who else we get after Johnson, I think it was LeVar Johnson, because uh, I can't see it now. Let's, get, let's see what happens here. Um, yeah, it was LeVar Johnson. Since then, Keith Payne, Jaylene Delaney, Annika Sorensen, Naf Anderson, David Balby, Tommy Lindsay, Paul Tierney, Rajef Berry, um, um, Amy Binda, Lisa Fitzpatrick, coming up on the three hours, just for the hell of it as I sign off. Uh, see if anybody came in after Fitzpatrick while we did that refreshment. And that's it. Um, yeah, Ruth Peranda, Michael Coughlin, and uh, Joel Vell, Imelda Flores uh, came in. I will not hit refresh anymore. I want to thank you very much, everybody. Go to Groove.ai uh, to become a backer. Um, if you've already backed the project, go to Groove.ai forward slash white dash label to become a backer. Check out the page. It has all the information you need. FAQs are there. If you've got any questions, any problems paying, please go to support.groovedigital.com. And to get your, uh, your Chrome extension, you go to groove.ai forward slash extension to get the Chrome extension. That's groove.ai forward slash extension to get your free gift, which I promised you for staying. And you could do AI without having to pay us anything in a pretty cool way. An update of that will be coming up soon. And with Donna's permission, we're going to be peacing out.